Welcome back to Lubbock, number three, Oklahoma and Texas Tech just about ready for the opening kickoff. I'm Sean McDonough along with Ed Cunningham. Delighted to have you with us. This Oklahoma defense is certainly on a roll. They have not allowed the opposing offense a touchdown in the last two victories over Tulsa and Texas A&M. And Ed, they might have the best linebacker and the best defensive back in the country. It's a little unfair, isn't it? Rocky Kalmus, a unanimous All-American last year. He's having the same type season. Third year in a row that he's had over 100 tackles. And the best part about Rocky is you don't have to take him out on passing downs. He runs very well. Perhaps the best player in all of college football is Roy Williams. He may not get an invitation to New York for the Heisman, Sean, but a lot of people think he deserves one. That defense will be tested today against Texas Tech. The Red Raiders averaging 35 points per game, and Coach Mike Leach thinks his quarterback might be the best in the country, Cliff Kingsbury. He's certainly one of the top ones in the conference. Very good, very efficient. He's had great games against good opponents. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he will move around in the pocket. Eyes always downfield. He's got six receivers sometimes to look for. He has been fantastic against good competition this year. Nearly 70% completion and five touchdowns. Although, Sean, I think this may be the best defense of the bunch he's faced all season. Down on the sidelines, here's Leslie Goodell. Sean, Mike Leach is one of the more unique college football coaches in the game. He has a law degree from Pepperdine. And he says he sees a lot of parallels between law and football. They're both analytical. They're both confrontational. They take a lot of paperwork, and there's never enough time to prepare. Away from the game, he recently took up surfing. He learned to surf in Los Angeles three years ago. He's been on family trips to go surfing, been to Maui, but it's tough to find a good wave in Lubbock. Indeed it is, Leslie. Oklahoma won the toss and deferred. Texas Tech elected to... Received the opening kickoff, so Tim Duncan will kick it off for Oklahoma, the senior from Clinton, Oklahoma. Ivory McCann, the true freshman, one of the most exciting return men in the country, back deep to receive the kickoff. In their season opener against New Mexico, he fielded one eight yards deep in the end zone, started to run it out, the crowd groaned, but then they were cheering when he took it 108 yards for a touchdown. Will he try it again from about eight yards deep? Yes, he will. And he slips down on this wet artificial surface near the 15-yard line. They've had a lot of rain here the last few days. And this field is slippery. The chance for more rain here today. The game begins with 59-degree temperatures, a 10-mile-per-hour breeze, and overcast skies overhead. Flip Kingsbury, the junior. In his second year as the starter, he set 13 Texas Tech records last year. This season, has passed for more than 2,900 yards, completed 68% of his passes. His coach, Mike Leach, says he is the best quarterback in the Big 12. And when you think about Eric Crouch and Chris Simmons, among others, that's a big statement. But Mike Leach says the numbers speak for themselves. Moving along the line, there to get Tommy Harris, the freshman nose guard for Oklahoma, made contact with the center Toby Cecil before the snap. The Texas Tech backs and receivers Ricky Williams with 70 receptions. Once one of the top rushers in the country, now an outstanding receiver. They start with three wide receivers and Cole Roberts, the tight end. Well, for an Oklahoma native, who was not recruited highly by the Sooners. On first and five, Kingsbury a quick pass. That's Mickey Peters with a first down across the 30-yard line. Now the offensive line for Texas Tech. Loper, Hyder, who's the leader of the offensive line, Cecil, Richards, and Keck. Keck will play both tackle and guard today. First and 10 from the 30, and the pass batted down by Jimmy Wilkerson. Every member of the Oklahoma defense got a game ball after they shut down A&M last week, held the Aggies to five first downs. But Bob Stoops singled out Jimmy Wilkerson for a particularly strong game with eight tackles. He's part of the defensive front with Tommy Harris, the true freshman, Klein and Heineke. The linebackers, the speedy Teddy Lehman in the middle with Calvis, the Puckness Award finalist, and Brandon Moore. Perkins, Everidge, Williams, and straight the secondary. We'll see a lot of five and six defensive back set. Ricky Williams. Out of bounds. At 
at the 35 yard line. A gain of five. Roy Williams made the tackle. Ricky Williams, a guy who's had to totally change his outlook, was a running back in Spike Dyke's old system, had over 1,500 yards back in 1998. He had a severe knee injury in 99. He's fit in very well to this system, and Roy Williams, a guy that Oklahoma will move all around, now he's over to the left side. Watch for heat coming from him. On third and five, Kingsbury has it batted down and intercepted. Corey Klein picked it off. Roy Williams putting pressure on the quarterback, Kingsbury, deflected it. And Roy Williams did come on a block, but such a nice job right here at the top of your screen. He sees the flare pass, so he stops his rush, reads the eyes of Kingsbury. What an athletic play, and another athletic play by a big defensive lineman to go up and catch that in Corey Klein. But really, Sean, it's just the recognition of Roy Williams. He sees things so well. He was coming on an all-out blitz, stopped, put the brakes on, got up and got a hand on it, made a huge play for Oklahoma. First interception for Corey Klein, as you might expect, a sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So here's Nate Hibble coming off a terrific second half last week against AM when he completed 14 out of 16. They open with four wide receivers. Actually, three in the tight end, Trent Smith split out as he often is. And a handoff to Quentin Griffin, tackled by Jonathan Hawkins, the senior outside linebacker, number 47. Hibble on a hot streak, 59% for the season, but over the last two games against Tulsa and Texas A&M, he's completed 73% of his passes while throwing for 542 yards. He's a junior from Hazelhurst, Georgia. And a bit of a slow start against A&M. He called his first half gross. Chuck Long, the quarterback's coach, said it was a problem with his mechanics, just wasn't getting self set. Hibble throws, and the receiver is slipped down again on the wet turf. He was looking for Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman. He's the number three receiver for Oklahoma this season. Griffin, a dual threat as a runner and a receiver. They start the game with three wide receivers and the tight end, Smith, who leads the team with 52 catches this year. Up front, Romero has not allowed a sack this season. Allowed only two last year. Duncan, the true freshman, Carter, Skinner, and Fields. The rest of their front five for Coach Bob Stoops. Third down and eight. The Sooners trying to capitalize on the turnover. The blitz well picked up by the line. Hibble throws back across the middle. Incomplete looking for Mark Clayton. He was fortunate that wasn't picked off. Spoke with Greg McMackin, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, before the ball game, and he said that was his plan early against Hibble because of the struggles that he's had early in ball games, getting himself into the flow. He wanted to bring pressure. This time, double eight-gap blitz. Oklahoma does a nice job of picking it up, but it requires Hibble to move out of the pocket. Sean, we saw this against AM. This can be a very dangerous throw. He's got to be careful. Tim Duncan has made eight straight field goals. This will be a 42-yard try. Matt McCoy, the holder. Long enough. And good. Tim Duncan, who rushed for a touchdown last week against Texas A&M on a fake field goal, picks a three-pointer, and the Sooners have a 3 nothing lead. The Sooners lead 3 to nothing. Perhaps a moral victory for Texas Tech, holding the Sooners to the three points after the turnover. Duncan splits the uprights again, this time with the kickoff. It's about the only way Ivory McCann won't try to run one back for Texas Tech. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road by Budweiser. With the crisp, clean, refreshing taste, you'll find in no other beer. By America's Dairy Farmers. Ah, the power of cheese. And by Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Big weekend on the Texas Tech campus. Last night, Bob Knight made his Red Raider debut as coach. And a win against William & Mary. Ricky Williams dragging Corey Heineke for a ride before 
The defensive end got Ricky down on the carpet at the 28-yard line. A gain of eight for Williams, who really has made the transformation. Edwin Spike Dykes was the coach here, was a running attack, and Ricky was one of the top rushers in the nation. Now it's a passing attack, and he's one of the top pass receivers. It still shows he's got that power, that little middle trap, dragging a couple of tackles. It's a four-man rush. Kingsbury out in the flat for Williams. He started the day with 70 career receptions. And he ran into Roy Williams again. 70 receptions this season for Ricky Williams entering today's game. The senior from Duncanville, Texas. And there is the transformation we were talking about. And this kind of versatility, he's not the biggest guy in the world, and he has that leg injury that he blew his knee up. But that kind of versatility, Sean, that will raise a lot of eyes by NFL scouts because that's the numbers of a third down back. Blitz, pass caught, Williams trying to run away from Roy Williams. And Roy had help from Brandon Everidge to knock Ricky Williams out of bounds. So it's a first down, a good call against the Blitz. And the Red Raiders will have a first and ten near the 40-yard line. And Mike Leach, who uh, operates as his own offensive coordinator, worked under Hal Mummy for a long time. He said one of the fun things to do in this game is figure out what works. That time Roy Williams was in on the slot receiver, Wes Welker. And as he goes in on the slant, you mentioned the blitz coming from the outside. Him and Kingsbury thinking on the same page. There comes the heat. You know they can't cover Williams in the flat. Whistles before the errant snap. Randy Crystal, the referee, leading this Big 12 officiating crew. Prior to the snap, illegal snap on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain first down. Leslie Goodell told you about Mike Leach, this 40-year-old who was in his second season as head coach here after one year with Bob Stoops as the offensive coordinator. He put in the Sooners' offense, but they still run. The offenses are very similar. That was Coach Leach and the Oklahoma coaches said. Oklahoma tries to run the ball a lot more than Texas Tech does. That's the major difference. Texas Tech almost exclusively a throwing team. Here's Ricky Williams in the flat. And another thing we've seen right away is that Roy Williams is going to be chasing Ricky all over the place. And that a lot of these players are being affected by this slick turf still wet after the heavy rains of the last few days. I took a walk down on the field before the game because usually after turf if you give it about eight hours it'll soak through but it was dry on top but if you kicked your foot water came up from underneath and I'm wondering if this these teams don't need to go in at halftime and get longer studs on the end of their turf shoes. Second and long. Nicky Peters across the middle and shoved out of bounds by Teddy Lehman. Peters is a sophomore from Weatherford, Texas, coming off a huge game last week up at Oklahoma State. He had 10 receptions in that game against the Cowboys for 100 yards receiving. The outset of this game, Cliff Kingsbury says most teams, if you look at our yards for completion, they're pretty low. It's because they see a lot of zone defense. Well, right now, Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, rushing four. Now he's got a three-man line trying to keep everything underneath. And Kingsbury doing a really nice job of reading exactly what he's getting from Oklahoma. They reset the play clock as the center Cecil turned to listen to Kingsbury. The ball started rolling away. Quick pass. Caught by Peters. And he has stopped very close to a first down. He appears to be short by about a yard near the 48-yard line. Matt McCoy, a reserve defensive back, will play a lot today in the five and six DB sets. They had the tackle with Teddy Lehman. Boy, and it looks like Mike Leach took a long time to decide if he wanted to putt this or not, Sean. I think if he would have got maybe a little better spot, he would have thought about it. Of course, in this offense, the yard is really nothing. But I think this is a wise decision. Go with a little muddle huddle over here to make Oklahoma cover it. But punt this ball away and play defense. Here this Fagan waiting for the punt from Clinton Greyhouse, the junior from Roswell, New Mexico. Side Brandon Jones last week, but he mishandled a couple of punts early in the game, and Fagan went back to return all subsequent punts. He let that one hit. That was one of the criticisms they had about Brandon Jones last week, and it cost Oklahoma some yardage. The ball out of bounds at the 14. 3 nothing. Oklahoma still early in the first quarter and fired up Lubbock. 
Get up the swing light. Back in London, Texas, they're renovating Jones SBC Stadium. They'll increase the capacity in time for next year. These two teams are playing in a construction site. And a sellout crowd on hand. A lot of Sooner fans have made the trip. About a seven-hour drive down from Norman. A lot of these Oklahoma players and coaches know that for a fact because when they played here two years ago in the law by 10 points, their charter had mechanical problems and they got on buses and bust back about seven hours. Hibble throws to Josh Norman. Couldn't break the tackle at the 19-yard line. A five-yard gain on first down. Jonathan Hawkins made another stop. Greg McMacken, that's only one of two seniors that he starts on this defense after the Kansas game when they played very poorly and they weren't making the kind of progress they wanted to make. They took a young defense, made it even younger. They inserted a true freshman in a defensive tackle, Clayton Harmon. They moved in Ryan Acock into the free safety position, a strong safety, so that Curtis could move to free safety. And they've been on a tear since those changes. They won four out of five. The only loss by ten points at Nebraska with a tight game all the way up in Lincoln. Hibble looks to throw quickly again and does. The catch made a yard short of the first down. A little low for Norman, so he couldn't stay on his feet and run for the first down. An interesting story. Greg McMacken really didn't know Mike Leach very well before he joined him here in Lubbock. They had met at a couple of clicks. When they approached Greg McMacken, who was in Hawaii with June Jones for that one magical turnaround season with the Rainbows, they told him he could put in his own defensive package here, hire the defensive coaches. He liked what he heard about the direction of the program and the facilities, and he came from Hawaii to Lubbock. Hibble on a rollout as a man wide open. Big hit delivered by Ryan Acock. But Josh Norman has another catch and a first down out across the 25-yard line. They told us Acock was a big hitter, and we certainly saw it on that play. They were inserted. The younger guys were inserted. Here's a little play fake by Oklahoma because they brought a little better attitude, improved the team chemistry of the Red Raiders on defense. But, Sean, early on, I really like the play calling of Mark Mangino and Chuck Long over on the Oklahoma sideline. We saw the struggle Nate Hibble had early in the game against A&M. All of these very easy throws, short throws, because his problem is he couldn't get his feet set mechanically. He made the right read. He was just late. Mangino said the whole offense was out of sync in that first half. That block of poorly run route. That's Trent Smith, the tight end, with his team leading 53rd reception of the season then that gives him 100 now for his Oklahoma career he's the fifth sooner to reach 100 career receptions Lawrence okay. Lugens made the tackle with Paul McClendon and they list Trent Smith as a tight end Josh Norman probably getting away with a hold there on Kevin Curtis that got the edge for Trent Smith but Smith is such a fine route runner that time he just flared out as the two outside receivers ran off the coverage but he really is the best route runner, and at 6'5", 220 pounds, he can really get open against it. You put a linebacker out there, you're in trouble. First and 10, a high pass, incomplete off the hands of Mark Clayton. Monday night, the New York Giants traveled to the Twin Cities for a rematch of last season's NFC Championship game. Randy Moss and the Vikings looking for a chance to climb back into the playoff race and avenge that loss to the Giants in the NFC Championship game. First, they'll have to get past Michael Strahan and that terrific New York defense. Monday Night Football, live at 9 Eastern, right here on ABC Sports. Second and 10. Sooners at their own 44. Low snap. Hibble had trouble picking it up. And he just did get back across the line of scrimmage. He was upended by Jonathan Hawkins, who's off to a good start. And always off to a good start, our man John Saunders back at Times Square Stadium. Well, Sean, for Kentucky, this has been a good start and finish thus far against Tennessee. Jared Lorenzen here on the Burger King update to Anthony Kelly. This after Tennessee had just taken their first lead of the game. It ties it at 35 apiece. Kentucky at one point led 21 nothing. Sean. And of course, Mike Leach was a member of that Kentucky staff under Hal Mummy. Here we go. Prior to joining the Oklahoma staff for one yeah. year. Timeout called by Oklahoma for the third and long upcoming. 
Up there. Back in Lubbock, Texas. Still overcast skies, but it has not rained since the game began. We're midway through the first quarter. Oklahoma leads three to nothing. They capitalized on an interception, kicked the field goal. And Oklahoma really offensively going up against a Texas Tech defense that last year, a lot of, a lot of people talked about Texas Tech's offense. But Texas Tech was a top 20 defense last year. They lost eight starters. Greg McMacken has done a fantastic job with some of these young players. They don't, really, that two-yard, the, the field goal drive was only two yards. They held up after the turnover. Third down and ten. Sooners at their own 44. Five-man rush. Forcing Hiddle back, and he throws it away. Ryan Atok, the safety, came on a blitz. And the Sooners will punch. Greg McMacken has done a really nice job of forcing Mark Mangino's hand. They're starting to have to go with max protection. You mentioned it was a five-man rush on. That extra blitzer left the receiver in, and it allowed double coverage on Trent Smith. A really nice job of bringing the pressure, but still having coverage behind it. Wes Welker, the Oklahoma City native, back for the punt from Jeff Ferguson, senior from Tulsa. Having a terrific year, averaging just under 44 yards per punt. And he rolls and they block it. Nehemiah Glover. A redshirt freshman wide receiver. Broke through and blocked it out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And it was a bad snap by Ben Painter. He got to the right place. It was just awful slow. He threw a flutter back there and allowed Glover to come. Watch on the right side. He's going to come from outside, right underneath. The outside blocker is number seven, Brandon Everidge, the starting free safety. He overset to the outside and a really, really nice job of Glover getting back underneath of that, but a slow snap was the start of the problems for Oklahoma. Once Everidge tried to adjust, he slipped. Didn't get back to block Glover on the draw, the inside handoff to Ricky Williams, and it did not fool Dusty Dvorak. The true freshman from Lake Dallas, Texas. Missed some time earlier this season with a staff infection in his foot. He returned last week. And Dvorak, another true freshman along the lines of Tommy Harris. Guys that when they got here, they weren't sure how well they would adjust to Division 1A football coming from college. And they've done a fantastic job in the middle, both him and Harris. The first punt that Ferguson has had blocked this season. He had three blocked last year. And had seven blocked in his career. Kingsbury stepped away from the rush and a big hit by Roy Williams put on Mickey Peters. A very short gain on the play to the 25-yard line, a hard-earned gain of two for Peters. Boy, Roy Williams is such a spectacular athlete. You know, a lot of people think he's just a strong safety. He's going to be up around the line of scrimmage. He does such a nice job in every part of the game. This He's just dropped off in zone, reading Kingsbury's eyes, not a fumble there. But such a hard hitter and such a smooth athlete. A lot of times, Sean, guys that can strike like that, they're not real fluid in coverage. That's not the case with Mr. Williams. Three receivers to the left. Kingsbury out of the gun with the three-man rush. And as a receiver, first down, Anton Page. The junior from Royal Palm Beach, Florida, did his first season here at Tech after two. At Northwest Mississippi Junior College, where he was a first-team junior college All-American last year with 64 catches and 18 touchdowns to lead the nation. Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, talked about Kingsbury being a lot like Josh Heifel, that he won't run around a lot, but he just takes those little side steps, just enough time to get out of the way of the rush. A good rush by Oklahoma, but great patience by Kingsbury. He's hit on seven straight passes now, eight out of ten for the game. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. Over the middle. The ball incomplete. In and out of the hands of Cole Roberts. And it was a hit by Brandon Everidge that helped knock the ball out. Kingsbury in his junior year, just four career touchdown passes behind their all-time leader, 
Robert Hall. And he will shatter that mark, assuming that he stays healthy. He's already number one in tech history in career pass attempts, completions, 300 yard games. He's had nine of those, 400 yard games. He's had four of those, including last week with 440 against Oklahoma State. Second and 10 from the 14. Sun comes out and the flags are flying. They might have taken too long to get it off. Five yards penalty and remains second down. The one thing that Mike Leach talks about when you talk about his quarterback, Kingsbury, he mentions how he's a relentless in preparation for games. He tries to see everything. He knows what's coming. Very, very familiar with this defense. This is the third time that he's played against Oklahoma in the Bob Stoops uh, system. So he knows what kind of things they're going to try to do. And obviously, Stoops and his staff are smart enough to add a couple of wrinkles into the uh, ball game when you're playing against a guy who's this smart. Two receivers to the right. And down to one second on the play clock. And again, they didn't get it off. Apparently, he wanted Ricky Williams to go in motion, and Ricky didn't realize he was supposed to. Prior to the snap, delay, the five-yard penalty, and it remains second down. Back-to-back -back delay of game penalties against Texas Tech. Bob Stoops is trying to, as he sees Kingsbury checking off, he's doing the same. He's trying to get to his defense because he sees what things are starting to happen on the field to have them adjust to what Kingsbury is trying to adjust to. Now second and 20. At the 24-yard line, Kingsbury hit as he throws. It's complete to Ricky Williams. Banged out of bounds by Roy Williams. Brandon Shelby. Put the pressure on the quarterback. Here's John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. Crucial game for Miami. Number two in the BCS standings facing Syracuse. Team that's won eight straight. Ken Dorsey, 22 yards to Andre Johnson. And they have what they didn't have last week, an offensive touchdown. Miami leads Syracuse 10 to nothing. Eight straight wins for Syracuse. Third down and 19. Kingsbury throws short again. Williams lost the ball. It's still in play and now rolls out of bounds. Matt McCoy knocked it out of the hands of Ricky Williams. This play wasn't going very far anyway, but Tech very fortunate that it went out of bounds. And they're in long field goal range. They lost a yard on the fumble, perhaps even two. It would be about a 42-yard try. Sean, this is about what happened last year to Texas Tech against Oklahoma. They had seven trips in the first half on the plus side of the 45. Two interceptions, two ended on downs, a punt, and two field goal attempts, one of which was missed. When you get down in there, those two penalties awfully costly, making this a very long field goal. Robert Trace trying a 42-yarder from the left hash mark into the breeze, going between 5 and 10 miles per hour. And it is good. Robert Trace continuing his amazing season now. 10 out of 13 for the year in field goals. He was cut from the Tech football team 19 months ago. After some pickers struggled in preseason camp, they got on the phone to the coaches, called Trace up, told him to come back, try out again. He won the kicking contest in practice with about 90% accuracy. And he's had an outstanding season. Can you imagine all the things you have to do as a coach? And then you come into the fall and you don't have a kicker and you have to call the guy up who you cut. That's Mike Leach. He came into a good situation that Spike Dykes left for him. But those are things that keep coaches up at night. Well, each team has a 42-yard field goal. We're tied at three. And it looked like Roy Williams might have injured himself. Looks like he stepped on somebody's foot on the sideline on that play. Chasing after the fumble, he rolled his right ankle there, too. Yes, he did. And, you know, we've already got Oklahoma already has one guy, Jason White, the victim of a turf injury. He, on a phantom plan of his foot, the backup quarterback who was starting against Nebraska, blew out his knee, had ACL repair, uh, repaired uh, on Monday in surgery. So they don't need more astro injuries here at Oklahoma. The Hunter Greyhouse. Off, a good kick into the wind. 
deeper than the Sooners thought it was going to be. Antoine Savage and Curtis Big and couldn't handle it and rolled through the end zone. Well, this Tech football team is having a terrific season, but that isn't the only sports-related buzz around campus. Last night at United Spirit Arena, Bob Knight returned to the sidelines as the new head coach at Texas Tech. They rolled to a win over William & Mary, 75-55. I like, um, I like the enthusiasm that we've had. You know, hell, I even liked uh, a lot of the enthusiasm after the Texas A&M football game. From the 20, first and 10, and the handoff by Hibble to Quentin Griffin. And Lawrence Flugents made the tackle. Interesting, Ed, beautiful new arena on campus. It's about 15,000. It was announced crowd of 10,000. We were at the game. It looked like it was only about half full. But that's because those tickets for this tournament they're playing, the Red Raider Classic, were not a part of the season ticket package. They almost sold out the arena for the year with season tickets, but didn't have the sellout last night. Some of the ticket holders a little bit upset about the extra spot for the game last night. Griffin out of the backfield, cut down short of the first down by Ricky Saylor, the cornerback. And it'll be third down at about three. Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma. Early on, he's got a couple of guys running down the middle of the field, but Kevin Curtis and Ryan Acock, the two safeties from Texas Tech, doing a great job running with anything in the middle of the field. And Hibble is also doing a nice job of coming to his checkdowns. It's not that they haven't run any deep routes, but Texas Tech is running stride for stride with every receiver as they break across the middle. 3-3 three, three game, four minutes left in the first quarter. Third down and three, Oklahoma from its own 27. Hibble pass deflected and incomplete through the hands of Curtis Pagan. Three and out for the Oklahoma offense. Texas Tech has to feel very good about themselves, Sean, defensively. Oklahoma, a lot of people have, the only complaint their fans have had is a little inconsistency on offense. They put up points, but they tend to have parts in games where they don't look great. But really, I think this is just a function of how well Texas Tech is playing on their side of the ball. Ferguson had a punt block. His first attempt of the day. High wobbly snap from Ben Painter. And a line drive punt. Handled by Wes Welker. And he is buried at the 35-yard line. Will Peoples. The reserve wide receiver with a nice hit. Friday, ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast is presented by Siemens. It kicks off at noon Eastern. 9 a.m. Pacific with the showdown. Texas football fans have been waiting a year for number six, Texas versus Texas A&M. Then at 3.30 Eastern, the trip to the Big 12 championship will be on the line when Nebraska, top rank, battles number 14, Colorado. That's Friday. Great day after Thanksgiving feast right here on ABC Sports. Kingsbury flushed in the pocket. Has some room to run. And goes to the 40 for a gain of five. He ran for 24 yards at Oklahoma in their loss to the Sooners in Norman last year. He was their team's leading rusher with 24 yards on the ground. There's Tommy Harris, a true freshman. They list him as a defensive tackle. He's really a nose guard. He lines up over the center. 18 years old. He started from the first moment he came onto campus. Has the ability, Sean. I mean, this guy is a future top 10 pick in the NFL. But really, when you talk to the coaches, they say it's his maturity and how he handles everything that has really been the difference. Rolls away from it and throws it away. Teddy Lehman came on a blitz. Ricky Williams stayed in to pick him up. Cliff Kingsbury stood on the sidelines back in 99. He got his first start against Oklahoma here. And he watched Josh Heupel go back and throw the ball 55 times. And he dreamed someday of playing in an offense like that. And, of course, the next year he got his wish when Mike Leach brought that offense here to Texas Tech. And he is such a good fit. All the coaches here say he is a lot like Hyper, maybe even a little stronger on. Out of the 
the gun on third down. Man wide open, flag down, ball on the ground. And the Sooners have it at the 45-yard line. Now they're waving it as an incomplete pass. Wes Welker never had possession, according to the officials. There's also a flag put on the offensive backfield in the area where you would anticipate a holding call against Texas Tech. Sean Antonio it, Perkins knocked the ball out. Sean, it looked like the side judge thought that that was a catch, and Rocky Calmus ran over there because as he was pursuing inside out, I think he saw that this was a catch. The umpire was the one who comes and waves this off. Oh, that's... Oh, uh, how in the steps. world do you not call that a fumble? And Rocky Calmus saw that. Holding on the offense. The penalty declined. Fourth down. And the official across the field on Oklahoma sideline looked angry and confused that he was getting overridden by the middle official. But Rocky Kalmus and Bob Stoop should be very upset. That was clearly a catch. Well, a big break for Texas Tech. Now they'll punt from the 39-yard line rather than have Oklahoma have the ball in about that spot first and 10. Clinton, great house to punt. Great house into the wind with a high punt. Fagan, the crowd thought he signaled for a fair catch, then tried to run with it. There is no flag. And very limited return for Fagan. Carlos Francis, a wide receiver, down to make the tackle. Well, that play reminds us of a play we saw last week in Norman. Texas Tech with an interception, and then the interceptor, Everett Smith, fumbled, but it was returned for a touchdown. And this is on the coach's film, and why the Oklahoma people were upset. They saw the official on the near sideline running in, waving the play dead, and the whistle was blowing. That's why the Sooners' offense stopped, and Bob Stoops did Make that known of league office this week, and he'll have another film probably on the way to the league office this week after a terrible call. Should have been a fumble. Against Welker, Hibble forced to run. And he runs for a gain out to the 34-yard line. A gain of six. It'll be second down and four. I mentioned out Jason White had surgery on Monday to repair that torn ACL. We talk, When we talked to the coaches, Sean, they had a really good answer. I asked them about... Against Texas A&M, they ran the quarterback a lot on design running plays, quarterback draws, options. And I said, are you concerned about Hibble taking shots? Because he does have the shoulder that he banged up against Texas, came up limp a couple times against A&M last week. But they said, you know, that's the only way we can really control in our four wide out system, just all out blitzes. So they have to keep that in their offense. And Ronaldo works, who backs up Quentin Griffin, and he got nothing. Robert Wyatt, the backup defensive lineman, made the tackle for Texas Tech. It'll be third down. And actually, actually Mark Mangino had a very good explanation about the design run for Hibble, in addition to trying to prevent the opponent from blitzing. He said Hibble, when he's running with the ball, is looking at who is coming at him and has a better chance to dodge hits or protect himself than he does in a passing situation where he might take a blindside blitz and really get hurt. He can avoid it. He's got his eyes up. He sees where everybody's coming from. And I agree, I just think sometimes they, when he's out there running, he needs to think about sliding a little earlier as well. They go with all day to throw against the four-man rush. And Frank Smith wide open across midfield to the Red Raider 48-yard line. Lawrence Plugins made the tackle. That was a very tentative rush by Texas Tech. It's hard to believe that they could leave Oklahoma's leading receiver that open, but they did for an 18-yard gain. Once again, the same route he ran earlier in the game, just getting over there. There was confusion because the two outside receivers came across. That was Curtis Fagan and Josh Norman, and none of the coverage came underneath to get out into the flat. You have to figure that Flugents, the linebacker to that side, has coverage over there, and he got caught in the middle watch. On first and ten with the game tied at three in the first quarter. Flag thrown. Hibble runs. They'll mark him down at the 45, but... There are a lot of amateur officials in the crowd who thought they spotted a holding call right when that flag came flying in from the near sideline. Oh, they did. Aaron Hunt absolutely runs over the left tackle, Frank Romero. 
Romero keeps his sackless streak alive, but he gets called for holding. Aaron Hunt, a legitimate guy. Watch this battle over here. Aaron Hunt is 260 pounds, runs a 4-5. Look at the little shake, and then into the pot here. Romero, unfortunately, got his feet caught underneath of him, and that is definitely a hole. And Hunt still got up and made the tackle. Greg McMacken was raving about Aaron Hunt. He said that he is a big-time player and definitely has a future in the NFL. Aaron's just a junior. He likely has another year left here in Lubbock. Frank Romero still hasn't given up a sack. One way to keep that streak intact. Good tackle of that. Kibble goes for the quick go, throw. Go! Josh Norman stopped at the Oklahoma 48-yard line, down to a minute 20, left in the first quarter. Our clock in the top of your screen, a little bit off the official clock, which is now at 1:12. Visited with Greg McMacken earlier today. I know the defensive coordinator from Texas Tech. We were together with the Seattle Seahawks, a really good guy. And you know, had some great defenses while he was with the Seahawks. And when I was watching his film yesterday, the one thing that his defense does, they run to the ball, but they're very good at recognition. Whenever there's anything kind of like a reverse or any kind of screen like they just saw, everybody on the field recognizes and gets to it very quickly. Second and 14. Hibble throwing down the field this time, complete short of a first down to the Texas Tech 41 to Antoine Savage. Savage, the junior from Albany, Georgia, needs five receptions now to tie Eddie Hinton for number one all-time in Oklahoma history in receptions. And that's Hanson, the best cover guy, a junior college transfer that came in. The reason you don't hear a lot of him is he is the guy who shuts out the best receiver. But you could see there, Sean, how Hanson had to gather his feet underneath of him before he broke. Because of that wet turf, he couldn't get a true break on the ball. It's going to be the end of the first quarter. High-flying offenses held in check. Just one field goal for each side. The 3-3 three, three tie after one. Texas Tech has not been nationally ranked since 1998. A win today, and they would most certainly jump back into the top 25. They're 6-3 and three overall, having won four of the last five since Greg McMacken of the defensive staff made wholesale changes. Following an upset loss here at home to Kansas in overtime. There were a number of key injuries in that game as well. Lawrence Flugents left the game. In the Big 12 today, Iowa State rolls at Kansas. Kansas State out of conference leads Louisiana Tech, and Oklahoma State is putting it on Baylor. The Bedlam series to conclude the regular season for Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. A third down and short, a cardinal sin by the Red Raiders. They're offside. And it doesn't matter that they sack Hibble. Aaron Hunt ran him down for a loss of one, but it looked like Texas Tech was clearly offside, and that will give Oklahoma a first down. And Kevin, Kevin Curtis, Curtis jumping around the line of scrimmage. The senior is not a mistake you would expect from him. As he came up to blitz, I know he's trying to time his blitz, but he's got to be very careful. As he comes up, run sideways. He was coming outside, from outside. On the defense, a five-yard penalty, sufficient for first down. We talked about how young this defense is. This is not a young guy. All Big 12 last year. As he comes in, going sideways, he moves up, and not able to stop himself. That is a bad, bad mistake by a senior. A terrific player. Very smart player, uncharacteristic of Curtis. He's a hotel and restaurant management major. Does he like to own a hotel or a restaurant? Or perhaps coach when he's done playing here at Texas Tech. And right here in Lubbock, another flag. Oklahoma, as you saw, penalized twice. Texas Tech four times. Time snap. Delay. It's a five-yard penalty and remains first down. Two of the Red Raider penalties for delay of game. And now Oklahoma has done that as well. I understand you want your quarterbacks to have some freedom and Nate Hibble, although this is his first year as a starting quarterback. Bob Stoops and his staff talk about how right he is and how well he's picked up this offense. But after a while, you have to just tell them, guys, once you get a play in, I understand these defenses are showing blitzes and backing out, but you just got to go with what's called and get the snap off. 
Here comes the blitz. Hibble gets rid of it to Clayton. And Mark is fighting for extra yards to the 29-yard line. Tackled by Kevin Curtis and Paul McClendon. Curtis was a quarterback in high school. Wasn't highly recruited. Went to high school right down the road at Coronado here in Lubbock. And he says he'll always be grateful to the former head coach here, Spike Dykes. Gave him a chance to play college football at the highest level. And Curtis has rewarded Coach Dykes and Red Raider fans with a terrific four years. His second all-time in tackles here behind only Brad Hastings. A blitz. Hibble hit as he threw by Jonathan Hawkins. Pass was intended for Trent Smith, but a little bit short. And it'll be third down from the 24-yard line, third down and four. Sean, that's an awfully big gap in the A-gap. you got a double team going on by the offensive lineman. The right guard, Mike Skinner, needs to come down. Instead of helping the right tackle fields, he's got to come down when the back releases out of the backfield. There's nobody to pick up 47, Jonathan Hawkins. That's just a mistake by Oklahoma, and that's really the favorite blitz of Texas Tech. I can't believe that they didn't drill this all week but the guard has to slide down into the apron. Hibble under pressure, throws it off for an all day work. He breaks the tackle. There's a flag down in the backfield. He might have put a late hit on the quarterback, Hibble. Jonathan Hawkins made the tackle. It is the first down if the play stands at the 20-yard line. He had a chance to get works short of the first down yardage. Uh, he avoided the tackle. Flag on the play. Referee threw the flag right at the feet of Hibble. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Brian Acock didn't like the call. Well, I can tell you that uh, Greg McMacken, well, Sean, I, I mean, I, we, could, we could see, we'll take a look, another look at it. I don't know if they called it maybe because of the helmet going in, but it didn't look like it was that late by Kevin Curtis. Unless they're talking about his helmet making contact, but that is not a rule like it's specified in the NFL. Although it is the uh, official's job to protect the quarterback, that was not a late hit. The only thing I can think is they called Curtis because his helmet made contact under the chin of Nate Hibble. Nate Manning can tell you how much that hurts. Looks like a hit like that last week against Miami and fractured his jaw. A couple of key penalties against Curtis. Acock was also involved in that play. First and goal from the 10-yard line. The ball right on the 10. They cannot get another first down. Without scoring. That's was created by a penalty. Moving again along the line. Flag down again, and it's incomplete. Lofting it up for Mark Clayton was Hibble. Oseleo Hansen had the coverage, but again, it looked like Texas Tech was across the line of scrimmage. And a veteran move by Vince Carter, the true freshman for Oklahoma. Outside, defense, five yard penalty remains first down. Vince Carter, who's been starting since the Kansas State game, they put him in and he's really improved. And that time he saw Texas Tech in the neutral zone and went ahead and snapped the ball and gave Nate Hibble a chance to go ahead and try the fade into the corner of the end zone and not really have to worry about interception or anything. You can just go ahead and try to hit the big play. You want to beat the number three team of the nation, the defending national champions. You can't take this many penalties. Texas Tech killing itself with the flags. Quentin Griffin on second down, on first down rather, from the five. Was tackled by Mike Smith. Now to be second and goal from the five. Quentin Griffin is the guy that they love to use down inside the 10 yard line. 5'7", nearly 200 pounds. He's very powerful. Everybody remembers that great game he had against Texas last year. This year against Tulsa, he had four touchdowns on four consecutive drives. He's so effective. Maybe an option to the field with Hibble pitching it late to Quentin Griffin. They're going to have to use a timeout. With the play clock under 10, they were still in the huddle. 12-22 left in the first half. A surprisingly low-scoring game in Lubbock. John McDonough, Ed Cunningham, Leslie Goodell in Lubbock, Texas. Oklahoma and Texas Tech tied at three. Second and goal for the Sooners from the five after an Oklahoma timeout. Three receivers to the left. The tight end Smith out to the right. Went dripping the long back. Option look. 
After a couple of bad plays by Kevin Curtis, where he jumped off sides, gave five yards, and then he hit Nate Hibble with his helmet and a spear, and this time an excellent job. They've got the quarterback, and look at Curtis run with Quentin Griffin. That's fantastic football. A good job by Greg McMacken down inside the red zone, especially inside the 10. That's Oklahoma's favorite play. Third and goal from the eight. Texas Tech averages 35 points per game. Oklahoma 34.4, but they're at a 3-3 tie in the second quarter. Hibble over the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Curtis Pagan, but too high. Rosalio Hanson, their best cover cornerback, had the coverage on Pagan. So Tim Duncan will come on to try to make it 10 consecutive field goals made. Both of these defenses are doing a fantastic job down inside the 10-yard line of making the offenses earn what they're doing. They're playing good defense. They're backing some people up so that it's just not free range. When Trent Smith was lined up wide right last time, they had great coverage on that. And the left half mark, a 25-yard field goal try for Duncan, and it is good. Oklahoma leads again with 11-32 left in the first half. It's 6-3. Bob Stoops knows against this Texas Tech team that when they get down inside that red zone and their offense has a good drive up to that point, trading field goals is not a good choice against, Clint, against his old uh, coaching mate, Mike Leach, because Leach will start to find something that will work against Stoops' defense. Let's check in with Leslie Goodell. Well, Texas Tech has an added fan base this weekend, the UT Faithful. This is the sports section for the Austin American Statesman. Holcomb Raiders and some of the players from the UT team made the trip up here. Among them, Major Applewhite to his right, Kyle Shanahan, Roy Williams is here. Six players made the trip. Roy Williams from this area got tickets from some guys on the Tech team. The rest of the guys drove up. Roy flew up this morning. It was a seven-hour drive from Austin, but they're watching very carefully because they know a loss by to Oklahoma today would be their best chance of getting into the Big 12 championship. It certainly would. Not likely that Oklahoma would lose to Oklahoma State with the Cowboys having a difficult season. But Texas needs some help here today. Long holding the Sooners finish tied. The Oklahoma victory head to head would be the difference between the Sooners back to the Big 12 championship game. A high short kickoff. Nehemiah Glover, who blocked the punt earlier, doing some jawing as he was taken down at the 23. Teams have been doing this more and more lately against Texas Tech, trying to kick the ball away from Ivory McCann. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Drive equals love. By Mutual of Omaha, providing insurance and financial services. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Mike Leach has had a little bit of success. Kingsbury's played very well, very smart so far today. Everything's been underneath, and again, Oklahoma comes out with two safeties deep. I think they're very content to keep everything in the underneath crossing rounds. Go left, go left, go! Thrown quickly by Kingsbury to West Welker. And he was banged out of bounds by Brandon Everett, but a good gain on first down up to the 31-yard line. It picked up eight. It'll be second down and two. In a game that's this tight, Texas Tech has been very good all year in the second quarter, and I think that says a lot about the head coach, Mike Leach. 119 to 37, they've outscored opponents because in that first quarter, Leach spent that time figuring out what is the game plan against his offense, and then he starts to find things that he likes and matchups that he knows he can exploit. Faction gets a five-yard penalty, remains second down. Mike Leach and his staff very upset. They want an explanation for that flag. Don't think Mike Leach felt it was a good call. Tell us how you really think, Mike. Back at the 27-yard line. 
That's a swing pass to Nicky Peters, and Roy Williams runs him down. You give Roy that much time to get to the play, and he's going to get there. So the penalties continue to kill Texas Tech. Mike Leach still not very happy about the last one, which was the seventh flag against the Red Raiders. He had an instant reaction of disbelief. That's one of the rules that actually the defensive coordinators, they're always complaining about rules being changed on behalf of the offense, but that was a rule that the defensive coordinators were adamant about because they just don't want an advantage for the offense when they're trying to match their personnel with an extra guy inside the numbers. Here comes a blitz. Lane and Williams on the blitz. Kingsbury throws it up for grabs. Lucky to get away with that throw near the far sideline. Again, the penalty is a factor. And Texas Tech will have to punt. Very similar blitz. Oklahoma ran that time that we saw Texas Tech run against Oklahoma. And Teddy Lehman has great closing speed. The defensive coaches say that he may be the fastest linebacker to ever play at Oklahoma. It's been timed at 4-4 in the 40. Curtis Fagan back for the punt from Clinton Greathouse. down in seven ten and a half minutes left in the first half good kick with the breeze at his back very high and Fagan again it looked like a fair catch signal and he runs it back to the 43 yard line and the Texas Tech coaches questioning the officials again the last time Fagan fielded a punt it looked like he called for a fair catch as he was running to his left, Sean, is he was using his left arm to move over there, and it looked like his hand might have got, got above his pad. I agree with you. I don't know that he was going to signal for it, but if you show anything with that hand waving in the air, the officials are supposed to take that as a fair catch signal. 51-yard punt, but a 22-yard return by Fagan. Go <laughs> back and take another look at Fagan. Officials over conferring with Mike Leach right now. He wants an explanation. He's just moving around, but that left hand's getting awfully high as he's trying to fall around. I can see with the fans, but kind of in between. But the officials are supposed to, if there's any kind of in between, if anything, throw a flag for an illegal fair catch stick. That's what Mike Leach is saying now. You saw him with two fingers saying that's the second time that's happened. He's still hot about the illegal substitution penalty as well. Mike's a very bright guy. He has more of a vocabulary than what we heard on the sideline. He went to law school to Pepperdine as a master's in sports science. But that's not the trivia question today from Aflac. In Texas Tech history, there have been six 400-plus yard passing games. Cliff Kingsbury is four of them. We want to know which quarterback had the other two. And Texas Tech was just charged with a timeout, apparently because he was granted the audience from the referee, Randy Crystal. Mike Leach was charged with a timeout. Obviously, Mike Leach has concern about why that penalty was called on the substitution, and that's something that the way they run their offense, they get their personnel in and off the field kind of differently than most teams. He wants to make sure, I'm sure that he wants to be absolutely positive that they can still do the things that they do. Well, I'm gonna guess on the trivia question. We saw earlier that Robert Hall is their all-time leader in career touchdown passes with four more than Kingsbury's 44. So I'm gonna guess Robert Hall had the other two 400 yard teams. Do I have to jump on your bandwagon? Because I think so too. I'm with you. Have we given the folks at home enough time to answer it? Usually we wait like three quarters and people of all kinds of time to consult the record books. Let's have the answer. Get off the internet if you're at home. Try the shortest half-black trivia question ever. Which quarterback had the other two 400-yard-plus passing games here at Texas Tech? Hello? <laughs> Billy <Ooh>. Joe. <laughs> That was the quickest answer. <laughs> yes, it was. Unless you were Evelyn Wood, you couldn't read his name. Billy Joe Tolliver. Going on to an NFL career. Out of the gun. Hibble swings it out. 
Griffin did a good job to stay on his feet. And he is formed under at the 47-yard line. Ryan Acock and Rosilio Hansen up from the secondary to make the stop. A little bit of an adjustment this time for Oklahoma. You got a two guys blitzing, and Quentin Griffin, instead of staying in the block, goes out in the swing. Earlier we saw Griffin stay in for max protection, and Hibble had nowhere to go with the ball that time. A nice wrinkle by Mark Mangino and Chuck Long to go ahead and change it up and get him out in the swing. Now you start to challenge Texas Tech. If you want to blitz in those A-gaps, you better be ready for one of our best receivers coming out of the backfield. And receivers left and right, and Hibble is tagged. He faked the handoff on the end of round, and Aaron Hunt dropped him for a huge loss. Back at the 36-yard line, a loss of 11. It'll be third down and very long for Oklahoma. And once again, it's the recognition of Texas Tech. They must work day in and day out on finding the ball. The fake handoff, a stunt was on the left side. And Romero, who had Hunt, Hunt comes inside right there, drops in. Nobody blocks him, but an excellent job. He could have come off and run with the reverse fake or even run with Griffin but excellent eyes by Aaron Hunt he has 24 career sacks he trails Texas Tech's all-time leader Monte Rager by just one and a half sacks Rager now with the Denver Broncos Hibble throws hot by Clayton but short of the first down there's another flag down in the offensive backfield looks like it might be another roughing the pass Walking the pass here on the defense. 15 yards down to the end of the run. Automatic first down. I believe they're going to get a Dell Duckett defensive end for hitting Hibble late. And Sean, things need to start calming down. What is he thinking? That ball's, ball's gone. 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 You're on your feet. There's no reason to even put your hands on the quarterback. And you've been saying all along that if you want a chance to beat the number three team in the country, you can't do dumb things like this. They don't need to boo. That's the right call. Adele Duckett, redshirt freshman from Mineral Wells, Texas. Please stay off the black, okay? He's guilty of the roughing the passer. Big penalty. It would have been a punting situation. Now it's first and 10 Oklahoma at the 37-yard line of the Red Raiders. This time, Hibble did hand it off on the end around of Norman. And he shoved out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Temper's a little short on all sides today. Kevin Curtis made the tackle on Norman. A lot riding for both of these teams. Texas Tech trying to fight for a little better bowl position. Work their way into the Alamo or, or maybe the gal galleryfurniture.com. Maybe so even the Holiday Bowl. <laughs> outside shot at that. Oh, good, the top Big 12 team that does not go to the BCS Bowl game. David Mackin was upset with the officials as his head coach. Eight penalties against the Red Raiders here in the first half. 54 yards. A blitz. Nibble throws. Norman driven back. And did well to hang on to the football. Forward progress to the 25-yard line, or the 35-yard line, rather. A loss on the play of two. Ryan Acock with the reputation for being the big hitter, and he's demonstrated that a couple of times today. And a great job by Acock. Because the blitz is coming, he now has to go to the inside receiver. He squatted down. He was covering for the blitzer coming from the outside, Kevin Curtis. And an excellent job, again, of recognizing the little plays, that was a little wide receiver screen. Acock covering for the man who blitzed. Great job by him. Third down for Oklahoma. Hibble throws across the middle. Caught. First down to the 25-yard line. Trent Smith. A gain of 10. Second catch of the game for Smith. Anthony Terrell had the coverage on the junior from Clinton, Oklahoma. He was quoted this week in an article in USA Today about tight ends saying that he thinks now he represents what the prototype tight end is in college football. A guy about 220, 230 pounds who can block and catch with equal efficiency. That's what you're starting to see in the NFL. I mean, teams need to have that inside receiving threat, be it a slot receiver or a good running tight end. 
And Griffin breaks through. And picks up nine down to the 16-yard line. Paul McClendon made the tackle. Looked like they might stop Griffin right near the line of scrimmage, but he found a seam, and it took McClendon, a safety senior from Stanford, Texas, to make the stop. Coming up on the Capital One halftime show, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will bring you all of the scores and highlights from college football today. Really small. Second and one. Oklahoma trying to add to a 6-3 to three lead. Griffin inside the 10 with a first down. Kevin Curtis made the stop. First and goal, Oklahoma from the 9. Most coaches eventually will go back to their roots. And Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinator, who worked under Mike Leach that first year here, when he was at Kansas State, he was the run game coordinator. He's also the offensive line coach. So it's no surprise, Sean, when we talk to him about how this offense has evolved a little bit since Mike Leach left. Is part of the running game. Of course, when you have a guy this talented, Quentin Griffin, you might as well hand it off to him a few times. First and goal on a drive kept alive by roughing the pass with penalty. Griffin tried the middle again, and he got chopped down by Jonathan Hawkins. Quentin Griffin, the ball carrier, tackled with the play number 51, Lawrence Jr. The toughest place to score for an offense in the red zone, the toughest down in distance, is first and goal from the nine-yard line. That time, Oklahoma tries a little bit of a draw, but really, I think what they need to look at is throwing something into the end zone because you cannot pick up the first down, and the closer you get, the more bodies in that compacted area. Spread them out a little bit, have a couple of options, and maybe something in the back of the end zone for Hibble. 11th play of the drive, second and goal from the nine. Hibble throws toward the end zone. Touchdown, Chris Tony. First career touchdown for Tony. The sophomore from Choctaw, Oklahoma. He sat out last year as a transfer from Northwestern Oklahoma State University, where he was a starting linebacker on the 1999 NAIA National Championship team. Dribble had a lot of time as he avoided the rush. First touchdown of the game for either team. And Duncan's extra point makes it 13 to 3. Sooners with five and a half left in the first half. Again, the penalties by Texas Tech, the key in this ball game, the roughing the passer penalty kept the touchdown drive alive. Well, the sun has come out here in Lubbock and it is shining brightly on Chris Tony. He caught the eight yard touchdown pass from Nate Hibble. Linebacker one on one with Tony makes a huge area error. That's number 46, Mike Smith. No reason for him to be running up to go with Hibble. And as Hibble waved Tony back, Smith just lost track of the fullback. And that ball had to seem like it was in the air forever for the former linebacker. Those are very difficult catches when you're wide open in the end zone. An 11-play drive. Tim Duncan will kick off. Last time they did a sky kick to keep it away from Ivory McCann. And they do it again. Nehemiah Glover trying to run all the way across the field. Bounces off a couple of hits and is finally tackled from behind by Antoine Savage at the 24-yard line. Time now for our Chrysler drive summary. The last five drives for Texas Tech. Not impressive. They have just not... Sean, they had it moving on their first two possessions, and then they started making mistakes, penalties, jumping offsides, things of that nature. And against this defense, you know, although this is the third statistically best defense in the country, a lot of people think, because of the opponents that they've played, that it is the best defense. But it's not panic time, only down 10. Just stay with what you're doing. That's a lateral. Peters wants to throw it and does up for grabs, and it is caught. Carlos Francis made the catch. 
Looked like a disaster waiting to happen for Tech as the lateral was almost batted out of midair. And then Peters, who was a high school quarterback and competed for a quarterback job here as a true freshman before he was moved to receiver, threw a pass right up to grabs under pressure. Well, you can see that quarterback arm. He threw off his back foot. The linebacker that was coming on underneath almost made the pick. And Peters is now four for four on his career on trick play. Now a screen for Ricky Williams. Read the block nicely. Down at the Oklahoma 40-yard line. Gain of 16 and another first down for Texas Tech. What a great job by Matt Hyder. He's the left guard. I mean, Ricky Williams are standing front to back there. But watch Hyder as he gets out in front, and Williams gets his eyes around. An excellent block on the defensive back. That's Roy Williams, who had to keep contained. But Hyder, 6'5", 305 pounds, looks very athletic against one of the best defenders in the country. Six catches today for Ricky Williams, 76 for the year. Here's another. First down, he's playing into the end zone, touchdown! <laughs> With that catch, Ricky Williams just set the single season reception record at Texas Tech, and he did it in style. 77th reception of the year, breaking the record, 76 held by Lloyd Hill back in 1992. And it all started with a great read by Kingsbury. He runs right through the defense. That's Matt McCoy had the last shot up, but it all started with a great job by Kingsbury, finding a little time, and knowing he had a safety valve on the backside. Robert Trace adds the extra point. That's the longest touchdown reception of Ricky Williams' career, 40 yards. And Tech is right back within three. 13 to 10 with 423 left in the half. Raucous atmosphere here at Jones SBC Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. Sold out. These are notorious fans for being very vocal. Of course, two weeks ago when Tech shut out AM, the fans ripped down the goalposts and attacked the AM fans at the other end zone with the goalpost touching off a of melee. Great house with a great kick over the head of Savage and out of the end zone. So Oklahoma will begin at the 20 with a three-point lead. He's cramping a hamstring issue for Ricky Williams getting some work on the near sideline after his 40-yard touchdown reception. What a great job by Texas Tech that time using a little misdirection. They had Ricky Williams lined up over to the left. He snuck through the line. And nobody from Oklahoma saw him come out the other side. And Kingsbury, again, he's not the fastest guy out there, but he just does such a nice job of buying enough time to go back and let the defense come all the way over. Nibble 14 out of 21 to this point, 103 yards passing and a touchdown. Trying to set up a screen for Griffin, and he's belted down by Jonathan Hawkins. What a first half for Hawkins. A senior from Wichita Falls, Texas, in his sixth year. He got an extra year of eligibility for the NCAA due to injuries. Let's go back and remember that this offense that Oklahoma runs is the offense that Texas Tech all during camp, all during spring practice, they see because of Mike Leach bringing it here to Texas Tech. So they get the benefit. Guys like Hawkins have seen that type of play over and over again, snuffing it out. Inside handoff, Griffin. Yeah. A couple of tackles. And made his way out to the 20, where Adele Duckett made the tackle. We're talking about Jonathan Hawkins. He started his career here in 1996, redshirted. They played football and linebacker as a redshirt freshman in 97, caught four passes that year against Oklahoma. Was a fullback again in 98, not will mention all big 12 in 99. He was a reserve linebacker and special teams player in the first year under Mike Leach. Then last week played two games and broke his ankle. Appealed for a 60 year of eligibility and was granted it by the NCAA. And here he is with seven tackles 
in the first half. Four-man rush from third and ten. Kimball in trouble, throws it up for grabs. To the near sideline and out of bounds. Again, it was Aaron Hunt putting the pressure on Hibble. And he's been a going concern here in the first half is Red Raider defense. And it was pressure that cost Nate Hibble a chance to pick up this first down. A great job by the four-man rush. Aaron Hunt is so good off the edge. 260 pounds, runs a 4-5. Going up against Romero, he has been a handful today. Jeff Ferguson the punt. Wes Welker at his own 37. Again, pressure on the punter. They hit him. A flag down. Welker. And a flag down for the illegal block on the return. And Welker banged out of bounds. Ferguson still down. Will it be roughing or running into the kicker? Well, Sean, that's... I was watching him the whole way. It looked like they were going to get another block. This is going to be roughing. It will be a first down for Oklahoma. And I know that Texas Tech felt like they had a free run at the punter, but Ferguson is so good. Most punters focus in on that ball so hard they can't feel the rush. But Ferguson, a lot like a quarterback, can feel the rush and knows when to hurry up his get off. Did a very nice job of getting that ball off. Damian Chandler hit him and hit him hard. There were also two flags down for legal blocks on the return. Watch how quickly Ferguson gets this ball off because that's a free run by Chandler. Sean, he had a bad angle into the ball. When, when you work special teams and blocking the punter, you've got to go to where his foot is going to end up. So as you clear your blocker, you have to start rounding off so that you run right in front of the punter. That was just a mistake by Chandler. As he came in, he didn't round off enough. If it was going to be roughing it, I don't think they'd be having this long a conversation because it wouldn't matter what happened in the return. Right. And it did look like Chandler hit him hard, but he seemed to be pulling up a little bit at the end. He just ran into the outstretched leg. It wasn't like he gave him a shot in the head or anything. Three flags on the field at the 38-yard line and the one back of the nine-yard line. There are multiple fouls on the play. We have a personal foul it is roughing. roughing the kicker of Texas Tech. During the run back, we have an illegal block in the back against Texas Tech. The penalty that will be accepted is the personal foul roughing the kicker, previous spot, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. But why do they have all that conversation yeah. then about the block on the return? I mean, that, that, that doesn't factor in if it's just take the roughing penalty and let's go. <laughs> you don't These officials have, have had a tough day, and it's actually been a tough couple of weeks in the Oklahoma games that we've had here on ABC for the Big 12 officiating crews. Easy call by the official, but you're right, Sean. I mean, there's no decision to be made. It's an automatic first down, or Texas Tech gets the ball if they accept the block in the back. I don't understand why that would take so long. Nine penalties, 69 yards, a couple of them huge. Including that one, the roughing the passer penalty kept the Oklahoma drive alive last time Oklahoma had the ball, and they had a score in the touchdown. Griffin takes the short pass and runs it out to the 39, a gain of four. Lawrence Plugent made the tackle, the leading tackler for the season with 118. Coming in, he's a junior from Klein, Texas, near Houston, where he grew up a big boiler and Warren Moon fan. Face, uh, face paint as well. Looks like he's got his Halloween get up on. Second and six. Sooners at their own 39. Two minutes left in the half. Nibble didn't have an open man. In the crowd of the left, so now he runs out of bounds. About a yard short of the first down. Aaron Hunt was around his ankles along the near sideline. It'll be third down and one. Time for our Pacific Life game summary. The penalties a key. Roughing the passer. And they would have had to punt, kept this drive alive. Hibble found Chris Tony for the touchdown. And then the tech touchdown. 77 catch of the year for Ricky Williams. Longest of the year. 40 yards. The short pass from Kingsbury. That made it 13 to 10. 
or roughing the kicker penalty has kept this Oklahoma possession alive. Third down and one, the option. Hibble keeps it as the first down. Another tackle for Jonathan Hawkins. But it's a gain out to the 48. First down, Oklahoma. A lot of people wonder why Oklahoma with only one quarterback with experience and Nate Hibble, his backup is a redshirt freshman, Hunter Wall, would be running the option play. But this is something that Mark Mangino installed in the offense when Mike Leach left. In this conference, they feel like they have to have that because of how good the defenses are and how well they can rush off the edge. It slows down that outside rush just a little bit. Norman rush. Hibble with a lot of time. Threw over the head of Norman. One timeout left for Oklahoma and two for Texas Tech. Next Saturday, ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast continues. It's presented by Siemens. Saturday's action features two stellar games in prime time at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. A highly anticipated rematch of Washington and number two Miami. Some of you will see the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on number nine Stanford next Saturday here on ABC. Second and ten. Good pass by Hibble to Norman. And he's dropped for no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard. Jonathan Hawkins having one of the best halves of football of his career. He was in on that stop. And Sean, a play that, you know, you're, it's tough to pick up a first down, and now you put yourself as Oklahoma. Texas Tech may want to start considering if they're going to be in about midfield and using their timeouts to try to save a little bit to their offense. Where did they stop him on this play? And going. They're trying to call a timeout before the ball is snapped. Here comes the blitz. Hibble makes several tackles and goes down at the line of scrimmage. So the Red Raiders coaches happy they didn't get the timeout call before the snap. Now they do call a timeout with 42 seconds officially left in the half. Adele Duckett was guilty of that costly roughing the passer penalty on the touchdown drive for Oklahoma. Took down Hibble at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Kevin Curtis, a very physical safety, just ran right by Quentin Griffin, who tried to come up and block him. Blue just does a nice job of staying on the quarterback, dropping back. And you're right, Sean, it, Texas Tech obviously trying to get a timeout. They were calling everything. Very happy they didn't waste it right there on that big play. Lake team with one timeout left. 42 seconds left in the half. Lots of passing, as you would expect, between these two teams. And Oklahoma's had the ball more. 20 minutes, nearly 21 minutes in time of possession. To eight minutes and change for Texas Tech. So they have thrown the ball more, but they've had the ball by better than a two to one advantage in time of possession. And you wonder about that time of possession without those penalties giving first downs. I mean, it seems every penalty that Texas Tech makes just makes the drive longer for Oklahoma. They're either punting or they're on third and long situations, and they give them the opportunity to keep the ball. Not a very deep defense for Texas Tech either. They could tire in the second half. Well, Oklahoma has a lot of offensive weapons that can run in and out. Next Saturday is part of that Saturday ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast presented by Siemens. A collision of two Big Ten teams. One of the great rivalries in college football, Ohio State at the Big House to take on Marquise Walker in Michigan. Next Saturday at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific right here on ABC. Fourth down, and it is Ferguson back to punt. So he recovered quickly after being rough moments ago. That's Welker back for the punt at his own 10-yard line. Booming punt. Into the end zone. And we'll see how the Red Raiders play it. With 34 seconds left in the half and one timeout. Texas Tech down by three points. Well, you figure coming out to the 20-yard line that Mike Leach will go ahead and try to move the ball down the field. But, Sean, what they've been doing, because of the way Oklahoma's been playing defense, very short underneath stuff. you got to be careful. Something short underneath that gets tackled in the middle of the field make you waste your last timeout. So they're going to have to try to get some balls down the field near the sideline and then a little swing passes to Ricky Williams so that if he gets out there, he can get out of bounds. On their last possession, Tech scored a touchdown on just three plays. They went 
76 yards on gains of 20, 16, and 40 for the touchdown. <laughs> Taking many shots down the field. Typical of their offense. A lot of passes like this one. Ricky Williams ended right away by Derek Strait. And it looks like both teams will be content to let the half end. Red Raiders not in any hurry. Looked like they were going to try to take a shot downfield, but Oklahoma rushed four, dropped seven, had everything covered. So as many mistakes as Tech has made in this half, you think they would be content to go off the field down by three. Kingsbury goes into a slide. The crowd thought he took a late hit. And Jimmy Wilkerson, there was no flag, and it's halftime. And given that his team was penalized nine times, Mike Leach has to feel pretty good about the way things went in the first half. Down by only three to the number three team in the nation. Here's Leslie with Bob Stoops. Coach, well, your thoughts on the first half going in? It's kind of a tight one at this point. Uh, sure. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, we got three bad plays the whole half. You know, they, they put together a drive on some screens and they made some plays. Uh, but other than that, we've been pretty strong defensively, offensively, terribly inconsistent. Um, you know, need to get more going there. You said the same thing last week against Texas A&M. You guys came out in the second half very strong. What sort of adjustments do you make today? Well, same thing. We, we uh, Offensively, just need to settle down. Uh, we've got plays that are there. We just need to execute them better. Thanks, Coach. At halftime, Oklahoma leads Texas Tech 13 to 10. We'll join John Saunders and Terry Bowden with the Capital One halftime report right after this. At halftime in Lubbock, Texas Tech trails by only three, despite the fact the Red Raiders had nine penalties in the first half and had the football for under nine minutes. And it was the first half with a lot of big plays and big mistakes on both sides. It's amazing that Tech can only be down three against this good a defense from Oklahoma. But it's the defense of Texas Tech that's really been the problem, Sean. They keep making mistakes. And you mentioned the penalties. A couple of roughing the passers. That time Kevin Curtis with a spear on Nate Hibble. And then just a dumb play, knocking the quarterback down well after the ball is thrown. And then running into the punter, all of these kept drives alive and allowed the Oklahoma offense to control the clock in the first half. Texas Tech kicks off to begin the second half. The punter, Clinton Greathouse, kicks off. Line drive kick with the wind at his back. Taken by Antoine Savage at the four-yard line. Still going. Taken down at the 39-yard line of Texas Tech. Ronald Ross saved the touchdown. A terrific return by Savage to open the second half. Here's Leslie Goodell. Well, Sean, Mike Leach said that he liked the way the defense was playing in the first half. He'd like to see the same in the second half. He'd also like to see the offense play with the same rhythm. I asked him what he'd like to eliminate in the second half. He didn't mention the penalties. All he would say is, nothing I can talk about because of conference rules. That would mean the penalties. <laughs> At least some calls he didn't agree with. 56-yard return has Oklahoma in great shape. The ball spotted at the 40-yard line of the Red Raiders. Hibble, good time, throws, pop, first down and more. Mark Clayton down to the 24-yard line, a gain of 16. I don't know what it is about Nate Hibble in the first half and the second half. In the last two ball games, we were there at the Texas A&M game. Look how be much better his feet look as he sets in the pocket. Now, of course, the offensive line does a great job of giving him protection, which they didn't do such a great job in the first half. But I think when Chuck Long comes down out of the box and sits down with Nate Hibble, they can really break things down and make really good adjustments just in his mechanics. Man rush, Hibble throws to Josh Norman. He breaks the tackle of Acock. Some very shaky tackling to open the half from the kickoff return on. Finally, Josh Page got Norman on the ground. That's the team high seventh catch of the day for Josh Norman. And it's a first down for Oklahoma at the 13. Norman's a big guy, played tight end, running back for his time here. He's 233 pounds. 
So when you have Trent Smith, really a tight end on one side, and Josh Norman on the other, you have two very physical receivers catch the ball out in front of them, and obviously because of their size, they're going to be difficult to bring down. Seven catches, a single game best for Josh Norman in his career. Here comes the rush. It will throw, batted away, flag down. Acock batted it away, but might have had an arm around the back of Trent Smith, the tight end. Jonathan Hawkins, the linebacker, came on the blitz and put the heat on. Nate Hibble. This is Hatchet looking like the 10th. Spot foul, automatic first down. Penalty against Texas Tech, and it is. And a very big penalty. It becomes a spot foul because it's under. No question about Acock, that right arm around the waist of Trent Smith didn't even go to argue because he knew he had a hold of it, but a big foul because it happened on the three-yard line. Any pass interference under 15 yards is a spot foul. First and goal. Sooners number three. Hibble throws. Incomplete. Looking for Antoine Savage. He had Chris Toney wide open to his left near the far sideline, but didn't see him out there. Tony didn't have anybody within about 15 yards of him. Well, but it looked like just a clean drop by Antoine Savage. Tony has no one to block, so he goes out. A very nice throw by Nate Hibble. I know he had an easier throw over to Tony, but still that ball delivered on the money. Savage needs to come down with it. Second and goal from the three. Just underway in the second half. Oklahoma leads by three. Each team had 155 yards of offense in the first half. Thank you, thank you for having many more plays. That play run unsuccessfully a loss as Hibble is tackled by Joselio Hanson and Mike Smith. Back of the five-yard line, a loss of two. It'll be third down and goal. Once again, great recognition. This is set up as a quarterback run. Quentin Griffin going into block, and Hanson, an excellent job. And Mike Smith, one of the new guys, very difficult now. You've got third and goal from the six. And the play call didn't look like he liked. Three receivers to the left. Hibble locks it up and it's intercepted in the end zone. Ricky Saylor had the coverage on Trent Smith. The ball was underthrown. Oklahoma marched to the three-yard line and came away with nothing. Ricky Saylor is the third cornerback. He's out there with Trent Smith, who's 6'5". Saylor goes 5'10", and this is just not a good throw. Smith is open. All he has to do is float this to the back corner of the end zone, and Hibble underthrows this ball horribly, and Saylor takes it in. Really an easy interception for Ricky Saylor. That's the first interception by either starting cornerback for Texas Tech this year. Hanson doesn't have one. Saylor just picked off his first. Ricky's a junior from Tampa, Florida, and his first year here at Texas Tech with a junior college transfer. He's a view out in California. He was the NorCal Conference Defensive Player of the Year last year. Kingsbury wasn't expecting the snap. He did well to catch it after the juggle and takes a loss of four. That's the second tackle of the game for the All-American Rocky Kalmus. Kingsbury it looked like his eyes were down the field when the ball was snapped by the center, Toby Cecil. Kalmus, nice job, was not on a blitz. He just saw that... Kingsbury was having a hard time getting the ball in his hand, so went ahead and ran through. Seven and 14. On the 16. Ricky Williams. Hot to the turf at the 27-yard line by Teddy Lehman and Brandon Everidge. A gain of 11. It'll be third down and three. Nice decision that time by Kingsbury. A good call by Mike Leach. Give the quarterback. Obviously, you want to try to get something down the field for first down, but you just need to get your third down into a manageable down and distance, third and three, instead of an incomplete being third and long. Nine catches today for Ricky Williams. 79 yards and a touchdown. Here comes the blitz with Lehman. The pass on the Williams. He tackled for a loss. Corey Heineke. Terrific defense all the way around. The Lehman blitz forced a quick throw, and Heineke 
sniffed out the pass to Ricky Williams and dropped him for a loss back at the 20-yard line. A loss of seven. He'll be fourth down to the punt. Heineke, one of the guys who physically is not as gifted as a lot of people on this Oklahoma defense, but the defensive coaches for Oklahoma say the reason he stays on the field is he is the brightest guy on our defensive front, and you just saw it there. Want to walk on Corey Heineke. In the scholarship prior to last season. Megan back for the punt. And a flag thrown. Seven seconds still on the play clock. Sean, they had too many men on the field again. And Texas Tech, it looked like Trey Havarti, a backup wide receiver, tried to go off to the Oklahoma sideline instead of back across. Eleven penalties against Tech. Now you put yourself back even further. Your punter is punting basically from the goal line. Oklahoma may think about bringing some heat because they're going to end up with good field position regardless. As the day has gone along, it isn't as breezy as it was at the start of the game, but when there is, is at the back of Great House. Wobbly punt. Fagan. Stays on his feet for a few extra yards to the Texas Tech 48-yard line. Eric Bartee, the long snapper, made the tackle. 45-yard punt, 12-yard return. We're back in Lubbock, and time to check our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. History made on both sides. Roy Williams' 38th career pass breakup. He started the day tied with Mike Woods for the Oklahoma record with 37. And Ricky Williams, 79 receptions this season, breaking Lloyd Hill's single-season reception mark for Texas Tech. Oklahoma first and 10 at the 47 up tag. Hibble's pass, hot first down with the forward progress to the 35-yard line. Mark Clayton, another catch. Ricky Saylor had the coverage. Mark Clayton, the only wide receiver for Oklahoma as a freshman who's had at least one reception in every game. He's battled his way into this very talented group of wide receivers. For a young guy, he runs very disciplined routes. And when the quarterback starts to get confidence in a guy that he's going to be exactly where he expects him, he's going to start delivering him the ball more often. Four catches today for Clayton, 39 for the year, adding to his freshman record, Oklahoma. Hibble runs and runs out of bounds near the first down marker at the 26-yard line, a gain of nine. Once again, a quarterback running play called by Mark Mangino, and Quentin Griffin becomes the lead blocker. It's just like running an ISO play out of two back. Once again, he's just trying to get Greg McMacken, the defensive coordinator, here comes Griffin through the hole, does a nice job blocking on the linebacker there on Hawkins to spring Hibble, and Hibble wisely gets out of bounds before he takes a shot. Remember those eyes up, you can see where the defenders are coming from. Second and one. And Hibble keeps it for the first down, it appears, to the 25-yard line. You start to get the feeling, Sean, like the game we did last week, up in Norman that this offense, the second half, they need to get something going, anything positive. That was the first thing that's interesting when Stoops came off the field and talked to Leslie at the end of the half was how inconsistent this offense was. This may be a big drive for them to get something going. And they didn't quite give Hibble the 25-yard line. It might not be a first down. All right between the 25 and 26. It is a first down. Mike Leach has to find a way to keep his offense on the field and get his defense off the field. This defensive unit is going to wear out. About the only place that there's any kind of depth for Greg McMacken and Mike Leach is along that defensive front, and you can see them running guys in and out, in and out. But you're right, Sean. This is an awful long time for these guys to be chasing after the ball. 15 first downs, 23 and a half minutes of possession time as compared to 11 minutes plus for Texas Tech. On first and 10. Able to pass complete to Josh Norman. Down to the 19-yard line where Ryan Acock made another tackle. Acock's from a football family. Six uncles played college football. Ryan's from right here in 
Lubbock, Texas. The coaches said the only thing that was keeping him off the field was his pass coverage skill. They knew he was a very physical player, but didn't cover well enough all the time to warrant the starting position, but he proved earlier this year he could cover, and he's become the starter. He's also first team all-conference academically as a communications major. Another design run perhaps for Hibble. And he spins down with a first down inside the 10 and down at the 9-yard line. A little different wrinkle that time running Hibble. Not quite the same as they did before. Howard Duncan, the left guard, is going to release his man and get upfield and also become a lead blocker. Does a nice job running Jonathan Hawkins out of the play to allow Hibble to get up the field. And not many big shots on Hibble. Remember last week, he was taking shot after shot. This time... Getting up behind his big offensive lineman and going to the ground a little quicker. Another first in goal for Oklahoma. They had first in goal from the three, and Hibble threw an interception. This looks like the Clemson offense now with Woody Dantzler snapping it to the quarterback out of the gun and just having him run. That time he didn't run very far. Lawrence Lugens made the tackle with the eight after a gain of one. You get the feeling that Mark Mangino is very happy to start running a little time off of this clock. That was the one thing they said with the defense that we have. The reason we wanted to start establishing Quentin Griffin in the running game a little more, and now Nate Hibble, obviously, was to start eating up some of that clock with this great defense. This overflowed crowd watching a tight game midway through the third quarter. Hibble has a man wide open in the flat, and Griffin dropped it. Quentin Griffin... Wide open. Might have turned to look at what was ahead. Rather than look the football into the number 22. It'll be third down and goal from the eight. Had him open and had blockers out there. That looked like it was a designed swing pass to Griffin. Both the receivers on that side were locked up on their man like they were not running routes. A difficult catch that time for Griffin, but one he should have been able to make. Third and goal from the eight. Hibble throws wide open. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Antoine Savage. And Sean, credit Trent Smith, the tight end slash slot receiver right here. When he runs across, watch how the defenders go to double team him. Savage comes across the field. Nobody sees him coming across because they were so concerned about double coverage on Trent Smith. An excellent job of Nate Hibble in recognition. Tim Duncan adds the extra point. And for the second time today, Oklahoma leads by 10. 7.56 left in the third quarter. Touchdown by Savage as the Sooners back up by 10. Back in Lubbock, Texas, an overflow crowd. The capacity of the stadium, 50,500, but today 52,008 on hand. Antoine Savage with the touchdown reception, his fifth of the year, having the 48-yard drive set up by the punt return by Fagan. Eight-play drive, took less than three minutes, and Tim Duncan will kick off. Let's see if it's the sky kick again. Ivory McCann hoping for a chance. Standing about seven yards deep in the end zone. And it goes out of bounds. And the Texas Tech coaches say they're not upset that in recent weeks teams have done this, not kick the ball to McCann. Because a lot of times when the short kick, we get good field position anyway. Or it goes out of bounds. We get the ball at the 35-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Nissan. Nissan driven by Morgan Stanley. Formerly Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. Move your money. Get well connected. And by Tostitos Scoops, the dip lover's chip. Down 10 points, Texas Tech just needs to find any kind of rhythm offensively. They haven't had a chance on, they just haven't had the ball enough. Rare running play, Ricky Williams. 
his fourth carry of the game. Teddy Lehman made the tackle. The eighth running play total for Texas Tech in this game. They've thrown 23 passes. Gain of three. Second and seven. Flip Kingsbury with a lot of time. As his receiver, Anton Page, cutting across the middle. That's a gain of one. Third down and six. One of the reasons they haven't had much success is Roy Williams has really shown a lot of versatility. Everybody knows how good he is when teams come out and try to run at them against Nebraska and Texas, helping shut that down. But he has been so effective today from so many different spots, both in coverage and when he comes on a play like this. Tuck really cannot afford another three and out with his defense tired, but Roy Williams deflected the pass intended for Mickey Peters, and it's going to be another very quick possession for the Red Raiders. And the day that Roy Williams has had great recognition, causes the interception, and then coming up, like we talked about, one of the best tacklers in the entire country. And then you got to watch out if you're running crossing routes and they've got a strong safety with that can hit like that, quarterback's got to get the ball in there quick. Clinton Greathouse to punt to Curtis Fagan. And then up on the line for Oklahoma. And a very high and booming kick. Out of bounds near the eight yard line. Great work by Greathouse. He'll mark it at the 10. Oklahoma by 10, midway through the third quarter. And first and 10 from the 10-yard line, Hibble's pass complete to Curtis Fagan, but for no gain on the play, Ricky Saylor, the cornerback, up quickly to make the tackle. It'll be second down and 10. It's amazing what Texas Tech's offense has asked Texas Tech's defense to do today against Oklahoma, although Oklahoma was a little consistent in the first half. This is tough duty. This much time of possession disparity is going to start to wear down Texas Tech. They've got a good field position thing going right here. Let's see if they can turn it over to their offense down midfield. 51 yard punt by Greyhouse. And Oklahoma deep. Low throw and an incomplete pass intended for Josh Norman. Hibble now 23 of 36 for 155 yards. Two touchdowns and an interception as we check the Nissan drive somewhere. A little bit of a flow for Oklahoma on offense, but they just keep going back out on the field. They've got great field position for their last two drives, and the interception there by Hibble on the second to the last drive looks like it could have been a touchdown to Trent Smith. So Texas Tech defense is putting up a good fight against Mark Mangino's offense, but you got to figure with this much happening and these many big play players, something can break. Big third down and ten. That needs to get off the field, give the offense good field position. Hibble a lot of time. Yeah. And it is caught by Curtis Fagan for a first down of the 26. They're now seven out of 14 on third down after that completion, Hibble to Fagan. The one thing Hibble can do is be very accurate at times when he sets his feet, Fagan the middle receiver, and Kevin Curtis, a good move. Curtis got caught peeking inside. I don't know why in one-on-one -on -one coverage he would take his eyes off of Fagan. Fagan made a nice little stutter step got to the outside ball delivered on time by Hibble. Fagan catch to Fagan. Uh, 29 for the year. Oklahoma has six players with 29 or more receptions. And Texas Tech has six with 30 or more receptions. Ronaldo works trip. Lost a couple on the play. Let's go to John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. John with the Burger King update. Michigan, Wisconsin, Anthony Davis trying to lead him back down 17 to 7, goes 10 yards for the touchdown. Wisconsin adds a field goal, and it's all tied up at 17 apiece, and they've just gone into the third quarter, fourth quarter. Exciting action in the Big Ten and in the Big 12 here as well. 10 point lead for Oklahoma. Here's five minutes left in the third quarter. Nice catch by Fagan on the ball thrown ahead of him by Hibble. He got to the 31-yard line, setting up third down and five. Greg McMacken has been calling safety blitzes all day. This time he had Ryan Acock running free and just coming a little bit short. Hibble doing such a nice job. Here's Acock 
comes inside the defensive end. Hunt goes unblocked and gets a huge hit on Hibble, but Hibble does a great job standing in there knowing the pressure's coming. With three catches now by Fagan today, he has 100 for his career. Earlier today, Trent Smith had his 100th career catch, so Fagan is his sixth sooner ever with 100 receptions. Hibble, double pumps, throws. Flag thrown. If the play stands, it's a first down. For Ronaldo works. But Chris Tony might have been guilty of holding as Kevin Curtis came on a safety blitz. Sean, it looks like Hibble is limping a little bit on his right foot. He's been taking a couple of shots that time. He's good in there again. Just the fourth penalty of the day against Oklahoma. Texas Tech has been flagged 11 times, and that's a big penalty by the Sooners in the gates of first down. And Sets up third down and long. Nate Hibble is not moving around very well. I don't know if he... Holding on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. A couple of big hits on Nate Hibble on the last few plays. Watch if anything happens to his right foot as he drops back. Again, good pressure by Texas Tech. Nothing there. I don't know why he would have come up Gimpy off of that shot, but maybe it was a shot before by Acock that took its toll. Third down and 15 from the 21. They're showing blitz. Looked like they jumped offside. Hibble throws, caught by Norman. As far as I can see, there's no flag on the field. Plugins buried him. Looked like it was moving by the Texas Tech defense. Heard us up near the line of scrimmage coming on the blitz, but no flag thrown. And the Sooners will be forced to punt. Same thing he had before in the game when Kevin Curtis comes off the slot receiver. He's running laterally, and it looked like he might have gotten into the neutral zone. Hard to tell from our angle. Yeah, Ferguson the punt. Welker takes it on a bounce and runs out of bounds at the 32-yard line. You mentioned Welker is from Oklahoma City. He is now a sophomore. Last year, as a true freshman, he really established himself here at Texas Tech. Played receiver, punt returner, and kickoff return man. He really wasn't recruited by Oklahoma. His high school senior season at Heritage Hall, he rushed for 1,200-plus yards and 22 touchdowns, caught 52 passes for 11 touchdowns, had 118 tackles. Mike Leach did watch him play a game, a playoff game in the high school playoffs, and remembered that game when he came here to Tech. And he recruited him. Hit pass, caught Carlos Francis. Pulled down by Matt McCoy at the... 40-yard line, and you probably remember, Welker, if you saw the same playoff game that Leach saw, Wes had 14 tackles and two interceptions, including one return for a touchdown. Rushed for 60 yards, had 230 yards receiving with the game on the line. At the end of the game, he kicked a 50-yard field goal to win it. Kingsbury forced to throw it away. With Jimmy Wilkerson right on him. It'll be third down and short. Third and two. Pacific Life game summary, Sean, or things Oklahoma has done offensively. This was just a mistake by Nate Hibble. He had the size matchup he wanted, but then he atones for that mistake and makes a great read as Texas Tech went over to double cover on Trent Smith. He comes back to Antoine Savage, who was all alone in the middle of the field. Third down and two. And two for nine and third down today. Change it up with the run, and Williams has the first down. Driven back by Derek Strait, but Williams had forward progress to the 47-yard line and a first down. One of the things when we talked to Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator, about this offense, not really concerned about Ricky Williams. I believe he felt that with his front four, he could contain him. Williams showing no ill effects from that horrible knee injury at 99. He looks very quick. Kingsbury under a four-man rush, throws it up, yeah. and intercepted. Antonio Perkins, the redshirt freshman, with his third interception of the year. And 
That was a poor decision by Kingsbury on one of the very few balls that Texas Tech has thrown down the field today. Carlos Francis was the intended target, but that one was just thrown up for grabs. Antonio Perkins knows that he has deep help, so he can play underneath of it. Really, Sean, that's the first shot we've seen down the field more than a 10 or 15-yard route by Cliff Kingsbury. And Oklahoma all day has been dropping back into zone coverage. And all of those crossing routes, they've been snuffing them out and keeping them as very short games. That time, really first throw down the field, Perkins makes Kingsbury pay for it. Double on first down. The blitz coming again. The pass caught by Trent Smith. And they ride him out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Ryan Acock again on the tackle. Next Saturday, ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast presented by Siemens serves up some terrific games at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Ohio State travels to Michigan to take on number 11. The Michigan Wolverines, and at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the highly anticipated rematch of Washington and number two, Miami. Some of you will see the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame taking on the Miami Stanford. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And tired looking defenders pursuing him on that play. He runs out to the 45 with a first down, and the clock will run under two minutes when they move to chains left in the third quarter. Both these offenses very similar that we've talked about when Mike Leach was the coordinator. Under Bob Stoops, they have two very similar running backs in both stature, quickness, everything. Quentin Griffin and Ricky Williams, very good out of the backfield, very quick when they get the ball in, in, uh, in their hands on the swing pass, and both very strong with the ball. This will be the 65th play from scrimmage for Oklahoma. Texas Tech has run 37. Short pass complete to Mark Clayton. Short gain to the 48-yard line. This has become a very effective ball control and time-consuming short passing offense for Oklahoma here in the third quarter. And it all revolves around Nate Hipple getting his feet settled down. It's really only the ninth ball game that he's played in as a collegiate. Transferred in from Georgia. Didn't play much last year behind Josh Heifel. Mark Mangino and Chuck Long, his quarterback's coach, talk about how it's all in the mechanics for Nate Hipple. He knows the offense. He's got confidence in it. Once he gets his feet settled, he's very accurate and can run this type of offense. Second and six, a short blitz and dropped out of it, but the four-man rush put pressure on. It's an interception. Second of the day by Ricky Saylor. And he's tackled at the 48-yard line of Oklahoma. Jamal Brown, offensive tackle, made the tackle. So he didn't have an interception all year by a starting cornerback, and Saylor has two here in the third quarter today. And just a bad decision by Hibble. He's got a blitz, an unblocked blitzer coming to the outside. Throws it off his big back foot, and even though Savage looked like he was open, Hibble got too much air into that ball, and Saylor there, again, taking advantage of just another bad throw by Nate Hibble. And what more can you ask of Texas Tech defensively as long as they've been on the field? 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Oklahoma leads 20 to 10. Ricky Williams, very for a loss. Teddy Lehman in the backfield, and then Rocky Calamus with a big hit on Williams. Ricky's playing with a sore ankle, sore hamstring, and a bone bruise in his shoulder. And none of those injuries felt very good when he took that hit. And I understand they're trying to keep things differently. Mike Leach is trying to mix some things in here, Sean. But against this defense, they've had no luck running it, really. No luck in the underneath pass. I think they need to start working some post routes and some fades down the field. Kingsbury steps up, has a man. Pass too high for Carlos Francis. Kingsbury's not had a great day. He's thrown for 125 yards. He averages 322 per game. And that man was open. And the pass was too hot. Really, this is the first time that he's been asked to throw the post. Everything else, you see the crossing route right in front of him. Wide open. It looked like Anton Page was standing there waiting for the ball, but he felt like he could get the ball over Calmus, the linebacker. But because Calmus is in perfect position, Kingsbury has to try to get that over his head. And sails it a little hot. Third down and 13. Back from his own 49 corner. Boris is Roy Williams batting it in the air. And it's incomplete. He almost made another amazing athletic play. But they couldn't quite catch him. 
after Williams batted it in the air, and it's a good thing for Oklahoma that Roy deflected that because the screen looked like it was well set up. This guy is amazing. 220 pounds. He's got linebacker height. He's got small forward jumping ability. He is just, not only is he explosive to the ball, but the way he sees, he reacts before the offense has a chance to make a play. Well, as we know, the Heisman Trophy doesn't often go to a defensive player, but he's the best player I've seen this year, Ed. Oh, he's fantastic. Fourth and 13. Maybe the last play of the third quarter. The punt by Greathouse. It's on the 20, and it's down right there by the snapper, Eric Barty. That is the end of the third quarter. Oklahoma leads Texas Tech 20 to 10. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and word from our ABC station. Another spectacular day for Roy Williams, the junior safety from Union City, California. Texas Tech averaging 35 points per game, held to 10 today. And they're averaging that 35 points per game against some other pretty good defenses in this conference. They have wins already this year against Kansas State and Texas A&M. Trying to get four conference wins in a row are the Red Raiders, but they're down by 10 as the fourth quarter begins. Oklahoma first and 10 from its own 20. Kibble throws quickly and for a loss. Nice play by Kevin Curtis on Josh Norman. A loss of a yard back to the 19. It'll be second down and 11. Regardless of the outcome of this game, Sean, I know giving up 20 points, they shut out Texas A&M, Texas Tech Big two weeks ago, but this effort by this defense, how long they've been on the field, I mean, the time of possession is two to one, two quarters to one quarter. And they continue to do things against a very diverse offense when they see all the time, but they've really played well. It's a shame that their offense hasn't been there to control the clock a little bit for them. And ten men up on the line of scrimmage. They drop four out of it. Shovel pad, Quentin Griffin. Nice cut to the outside. Runs away from Curtis and has a first down. Paul McClendon knocked him out at the 34-yard line. A gain of 15. Good call and a nice run by Griffin after the catch. I was looking for a receiver downfield thinking, where is everybody? Trent Smith, the tight end, gets into the blocking up here on the top. That's an amazing call. Very lucky that it was called at the time when they were bringing an all-out blitz, but that's how offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators go back and forth trying to figure out by their tendencies what they like to do. And Greg McMackin, that down in distance, likes to bring pressure, flips to Griffin. Touches for the year now for Griffin, the leading rusher. Griffin gets the carry and goes out to the 35-yard line. A gain of one. Josh Page made the tackle. Near the conclusion of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. I got my guy. For Oklahoma. Roy Williams. Oh, he is spectacular. Second down and nine. Hibble's 30 for 44 passing. 204 yards. He's on target again. Josh Norman. About a yard short of the first down. They'll mark him at the 43. And again, time consuming. Drives with the short passing game for Oklahoma here in the second half. Texas Tech not bringing any pressure, just a four-man rush that time. Pretty good protection for Hibble, although he took a little bit of a hit there. At least there was a pocket of that offensive line that Mark Mangino coaches for him to step up into and deliver that ball. Both safeties rushing that time. Texas Tech is a big zone blitz team. Third down and one. Hibble. Keeps and has the first down. They had a shot at him behind the line of scrimmage. But Hibble has run effectively on occasion today. He's out at the 49-yard line with a gain of six. And it's 29 yards rushing for Hibble today. Well, you're never going to forget Jamel Holloway when this guy's running the option. But he is athletic. 
Steps underneath two guys who were going to the pitch man. One of those guys has to come down and force the pitch, but he's just efficient. Doesn't have to be great. Little doing a good job of letting the play clock run down on every play. Down to two as he takes the snap and takes off. Out to midfield. We'll mark him down right on the 50 yard line. A gain of one, but the clock is the ally of the Sooners, and it's going to run under 12 minutes before they have to snap it again. One of the big reasons that Bob Stoops brought Mike Leach to Oklahoma was because he doesn't he didn't know how good he was going to be defensively, so he knew he was going to have to score points. Well, now that Bob Stoops has the type of defense that he was used to when he was the coordinator at Florida, they start to get this offense tinkered around to have these types of drives with a 10-point lead. On second and nine, Kibble pressured by Hunt, deflected pass, incomplete. Josh Page tipped it. Kibble knocked down by Hunt after the throw. Third down and nine. Aaron Hunt working on the right tackle field this time. Good job of staying alive. He got blocked right from the start. But another big shot on Hibble. That was nice of Aaron Hunt, even though he was blocked. Continued through the play. Ooh. Oklahoma very effective on third down today. Eight for 16. This is a third down and nine. Blitz off the corner with Curtis. Hibble throws. Caught. First down again. Trent Smith to the 35-yard line. They move the chains. They'll keep the clock running. Let's check in with John Saunders in Times Square Stadium. Sean, Cal looking for just their first one of the season facing Stanford had pulled within one. But Chris Lewis comes back and goes 80 yards with Luke Powell for the touchdown. Stanford opening up some breathing room at eight points and leaves it now 28 to 20. Sean. Stanford's won the last six in that series no team has ever won seven straight in the 103 years of the big game last game for Tom Homo as Cal coach against Stanford he's done at the end of the year Quentin Griffin tackled by Jonathan Hawkins and the clock runs under 11 minutes remaining and the hands are on the hips of everybody in black for Texas Tech this time of possession is getting out of hand nearly 50 minutes time of possession for Oklahoma as this drive continues and these guys are worn out Second down and attack. Aaron Hunt a big loss that takes him out of field goal range they were in range for about a 49 yard try by Duncan with the win but with the sack all the way back to the 45-yard line, it's a loss of 13. And he's with it. He's doing everything he can up top. Again, stays alive. He's blocked early, but as Hibble goes out there, just a nice job in showing that speed, Sean. Greg McMacken says he has 4-5 range speed. Very good closing that time on Hibble. 25 career sacks now for Hunt. A half sack behind the all-time leader, Texas Tech. Monte Rager. Third down. They need to get to the 25-yard line. Hit old throws. And oh. almost intercepted. Looking for Trent Smith. The pass was in front of him. And Paul McClendon went for a diving interception. So Oklahoma will have to punt, but the Sooners did do a good job of taking a lot of time off the clock. More than five minutes consumed on that possession. You got a feeling during that drive, that's exactly what Bob Stoops was talking to Mark Mangino. Let's just be careful with the ball. Let's get on the plus side of the field. Very confident in his ability once Texas Tech has the ball. Wes Welker, standing at the 10 for the punt from Jeff Ferguson. And it bounces at the 5 and goes into the end zone. Time running out on the Red Raiders. Nine and a half minutes remaining. Texas Tech down by 10. Back in Lubbock, Texas. Number three, Oklahoma. 
with the only score of the second half. It came in the third quarter. A touchdown pass able to Savage. Texas Tech on offense. And only 40 plays from scrimmage. Five man rush, and Kingsbury has to dodge it. Stanley for his life. Playing out of bounds. And he does not get out of bounds. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Chased by Brandon Everidge. Here's Leslie. Stan, who's a fixture on the sidelines, the Oklahoma sidelines, Coach Barry Switzer. And, you know, what's it like for you to be out here watching this team? Right now, the Texas Tech defense has really held them, held them tough. Well, thank goodness Oklahoma's offense has got a defense that they have. Uh, it's too great. No, it's, Oklahoma has a great defense, no question. Texas Tech knows how to play this system. They play extremely well. And, you know, Roy Williams is the most dominant defensive back I've ever seen in college football. And, uh, Deion Sanders and Pro and this guy in college, they, they influence the ball game. It's been one, two, three, and out. Well, Oklahoma in the second half, let's see if they do it right now. All right, Cunningham, our analyst up in the booth has been talking about Roy Williams all game. I mean, it, it, you, could you expand a little bit on him again? Well, you know, he's the guy that uh, came out of California. I don't know how he's hyped out of California. He's recruited by John Blake. He was here when Stoops got here, and he's had a great career. He is a, a force on the field as a defensive back. And, you usually have to be a linebacker or a pass rusher to do that. This guy touches the ball, makes more tackles than any defensive back I've ever seen. Thanks, Coach. Well, that covers a lot of ground. Barry Switzer has seen a lot of college football and a fair share of pro football as well. Kingsbury's been shaky here in this half. He throws on the money that time for a first down to Carlos Francis. Tried to get to Francis on the previous play, and he was open, but he hit one of the Oklahoma defenders in the backside. That one's good for 17 on third down and 10. First down, Texas Tech, 8.36 left. Down by 10. Three-man line, outside blitz coming from Oklahoma on defense. Just rushing four, they're backing everybody out, making it very difficult for Cliff to find anybody. Four-man rush. Throws underneath Kingsbury to Mickey Peters. Short of a first out of the 45-yard line. You can see that the different blitzes that Kingsbury seen today had really have him confused because now, even when he's not pressured, he's shuffling his feet and looking around, anticipating the rush that sometimes isn't even right on top of him. A lot of times, when you just show a blitz, even if you don't bring it, as long as he thinks something's coming that's not coming, it's as good as the blitz. And I agree, that's been a problem for him. With today, he's just seen so many different things, he doesn't know where it's coming from. Comes right up the middle, and the ball's out. They tried the inside handoff. Sooners indicating they have it. And they do. Barry Hollyman came off the bottom of the pile with the football. Earlier, we saw a great play call by, on the defense when they went on offense when Mark Mangino called the shovel pass. This time, with the inside handoff, Mike Stoops had a blitz coming up the middle, and Cliff could not get the handoff to Williams. A very rough day for Kingsbury and the Tech offense. Three turnovers for Texas Tech, all by the quarterback, Kingsbury. Two interceptions and now a fumble. And it's Oklahoma looking to run out the clock. Griffin tackled near first down yardage at the 28, but there was a flag thrown. And even though Texas Tech offensively has not done anything really since midway through the second quarter, this is a drive, eat some clock, get down there, get at least a field goal, and then maybe Bob Stoops could start smiling a little bit. Holding on the offense, it'll be a 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. Texas Tech has 41 yards of offense in this half, in a quarter and a half. If time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report, featuring scores and highlights from across the country with John and Terry. and 20. Ball back at the 48-yard line. Griffin couldn't sneak through this time undetected. Rodney McKinney made the tackle. The junior defensive end from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. 
He played high school games on Friday night in Tuscaloosa. And then on Saturday afternoons, he'd go over to Bryant Denny Stadium and was a soft drink vendor would lug the soft drinks around the stand. He said, I spent most of the time watching the games, really, than I did selling the soft drinks. Hey, you had a whole tray of sodas there. Just sit down, kick your feet up. He's in his first year at Texas Tech after two at Mississippi Delta Junior College. Second and 20. And Hibble lets the play clock run down. He is six. For taking the snap, he's going deep for Clayton. He's open. Touchdown, Oklahoma. 48 yards. He beat Ricky Saylor in coverage. Taylor is still down in the end zone. This is just one-on-one, -on -one, a post route by Mark Clayton. We mentioned earlier what a great route runner. Look at the separation he gets from Saylor. And I don't think Nate Hibble could have flown over the top in a helicopter and dropped in the lap any better. Right here at the bottom of your screen. Because that didn't even have to give him much of an outside fake. Saylor was biting on the outside the whole way. But again, what an excellent throw by Hibble. And a great route run by Mark Clayton. Longest reception of Clayton's career. Ricky Saylor was beaten on the pattern by Clayton, being helped off the field. Six catches, 104 yards receiving now for the redshirt freshman Clayton. And Saylor favoring his right leg as he is helped off. Oklahoma had kind of lulled Texas Tech to sleep. They had kind of gone to that short control passing game. We mentioned how much time they were running off the clock. And then got the coverage that they wanted and took a shot. Very few shots down the field by either of these two teams today. And we said earlier they're similar offensively since Mike Leach put in this offense at Oklahoma in his one year there as offensive coordinator, the first year into Bob Stoops. And Coach Mangino and the rest of the offensive staff have tinkered with it, added more runs, more option. Duncan adds the extra point. And that touchdown by Clayton has some of the folks here in Lubbock heading for the exits with 6.21 remaining. Number three, Oklahoma leads by 17. After an anxious afternoon and early evening from breathing room now for Bob Stoops in Oklahoma up by 17 and with this defense playing the way it has for the last couple of years you have to like the Sooners chances of prevailing in this one with 621 left. Duncan will try to get away with the win. Yes. He's been sky kicking for much of the day and you know him going to run it out and five yards deep in the end zone. He reached only the 15-yard line. Roy Williams is still on the field on kickoff coverage. And he was in on the tackle. Time for the Pacific Life game summary. Hibble with a career-high three touchdowns. And third down's a key today, 50%. With a number of key third downs, 18 third down situations. Williams. 72 receiving yards, 19 rushing yards, and the big number for Tech. The penalties, particularly in the first half, a huge problem. And they were penalized nine times. Kingsbury floats out a screen for Ricky Williams. And they pull him down at the 23-yard line. Antonio Perkins made the tackle. Under six minutes remaining. And this is where Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, talks about with the veterans that he has on this defense. Kind of scary trying to get ready for this defense because of the new wrinkles he can add. And now what he can do is he can show even different things so that whatever team is getting prepared for them, Oklahoma State next week, and then if they make it to the Big 12 championship game, some things to look at for their opponents. On second and short, man wide open. Wes Walker at the 40. Inside the 15 and shoved out of bounds near the 10-yard line. They're going to spot him out at the eight. First and goal, Texas Tech. 
69 yards on the pass play. Kingsbury to a wide open Welker. Wes Welker was forgotten by Oklahoma during recruiting out of Oklahoma City. Apparently that time he was forgotten by the Oklahoma secondary as well. He snuck over to the side, a lot like what Trent Smith, the tight end for Oklahoma, did earlier in the game. And as the two receivers to his side cleared out, nobody rotated over in coverage. Longest pass play of the season for Texas Tech. On first and goal, Kingsbury throwing the fade. And it is incomplete. Intended for Anton Page. Antonio Perkins had the coverage. And with the way time is working right now, obviously not on the Red Raiders' side, take a bunch of shots into the end zone. Every ball into the end zone. You don't want something caught across the middle and waste any more time than you care to. And goal from the nine. Thirty-seven minutes to seventeen minutes. The time of possession is for Oklahoma. And Kingsbury sacked by Barry Holliman, who recovered the fumble on the last Texas Tech possession. And the hard part about a sack with everybody in the end zone and now huddling up, Mike Leach burning precious seconds down seventeen. They're trying to figure out what personnel they want in the game, and everybody is looking back at Mike Leach, taking way too much time getting the play in. That was the first sack today for Oklahoma, and they've had all kinds of pressure on Kingsbury throughout the afternoon. Here comes another blitz. Kingsbury in trouble again. Lost it toward the end zone, up for grabs, and it is incomplete. Caught by Brandon Shelby, but out of the back of the end zone, or it would have been an interception. Again, it was Hollyman with the primary pressure on Kingsbury. Shelby, who's not even listed in there too deep, has played extensively today. He's come a couple times on a cornerback blitz. Does a really nice job of staying alive in the back of the end zone. Kingsbury can't fault him for trying to make a play. Let's watch his foot. Good call by the official. Nice effort that time by Shelby. Going up and making a play on the ball, but the official was Johnny on the spot. And they're going to try a field goal to get back within two touchdowns. Robert Priest must make situation from 31 yards. And he made it right down the middle. We'll see if it's an onside kick that's coming now for Texas Tech. 426 remaining. The Red Raiders have all three timeouts left down by 14. We make it tougher at BA. 49. 275 yards, three touchdowns. Under pressure, he throws to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Intended for Clayton, who was open. Kevin Curtis closed ground as the ball hung in the air, and Rodney McKinney was putting the heat on Hibble. So Tim Duncan comes on to try another field goal. Really a nice job by Hibble, just trying to buy as much time as he could. And floated a ball in there that was very accurate as he was getting hit. And if Duncan makes this, it would be a three possession game for Texas Tech. And extinguish their already very faint hopes of winning this one. And for a kicker like Duncan, it's not a very hard try. A 30 yarder, almost in the middle of the field, and he's right down the middle toward the double team. 98 points this year now for Tim Duncan, tying the school record for points in a season by a kicker that he set last year during the national championship season. Undoubtedly, he will break it this season. They're likely to kick extra points next week against Oklahoma State. Well, for a while, the offense was stagnant. They were on the field a long time for Oklahoma. I'm not sure those fans and media members of the Sooners who've been complaining about the lack of crispness of the offense will be satisfied completely with what they saw today, but Bob Stoops won't care. You have to wonder what adjustments are being made at halftime because they're making basically the same play calls. We saw it last week against A&M, a very good defense, and Texas Tech, a solid defense. But for some reason, Nate Hibble just comes out in the second half and looks like a different guy. He's more calm in the pocket. He sets his feet better. He's more accurate. He's better on time. I don't know if you don't take that talk you have with him at halftime and just move it up before the first half. Tim Duncan. 
Duncan drives it deep through the back of the end zone. Now, if McCann caught that one against the back line, he would have run it out. He did that last week against Oklahoma State and returned it to the Cowboy 41-yard line. Let's check in with Leslie Goodell. Well, I'm now standing in front of a bunch of empty, empty seats that were once occupied by six UT players. Major Applewhite, Roy Williams, they have all left the building, and understandably so at this point. They are now seeing their hopes for a spot in the Big 12 championship fade as Oklahoma looks to win this game. I tried to talk to them earlier, but uh, they have somewhat of a gag order from Coach Mac Brown that said, you know, if you guys are going to go up there and make that trip, I don't want you talking to anybody. So they were very nice about it, but they said uh, they just needed to sit and watch the game. Kingsbury pressured by the four-man rush, and he slides down for no gain at the 20-yard line. Starters still on the field defensively for Oklahoma. Just Oklahoma State left, so it's highly unlikely that Texas will get the help it needs. And very likely that Oklahoma will finish the regular season with one loss and play in the Big 12 championship game. If you Winners of the South. There's Roy Williams putting the finishing touches on another terrific day. You wonder why he's still in the field, though, and I know they're proud of their defensive stats and all that, but if he got hurt up by 17 with two minutes to go, Bob Stoops had a lot of questions to answer. He certainly would. But plays like this are why people are talking about when Barry Switzer was talking to Leslie Goodell, he made a very interesting point. When teams start to look to draft players into the NFL, they want to know, can they impact a game by their presence? And it's very rare to find a defensive back because he doesn't make plays like a defensive end or a linebacker because of the running game in the NFL. But Roy Williams is a guy who has an impact on the outcome of a game from his strong safety spot. On third down and very long, a little pass to Ricky Williams gets him only to the 15-yard line. And will they go for them fourth down? It appears they will. Fourth and 15, Kingsbury still on the field. So although it looked like a very conservative call like it was, I would imagine Mike Leach was already thinking about four down territory. Not a lot of shots today down the field called by Mike Leach. But really, Oklahoma came out, played a two-deep shell zone, and made it very difficult to find anything wrong. They blitz again, and Kingsbury is sacked. Teddy Lehman, the middle linebacker. Hyman also there to finish him off. And they sack Kingsbury back at the seven, and that's a fitting ending to the day for the Texas Tech offense. Mike Stoops and Brent Venables, the defensive coordinators for Oklahoma, figured out this very explosive Texas Tech attack. They kept Kingsbury on his heels, Sean. We saw him get a little shaky late in the game because he didn't know if a blitz was coming and if it was where it was coming from. A great game plan by Stoops and Venables. Well, this era of holes and BCS points, if you're Oklahoma, you try to tack on another score. Make the margin of victory more decisive. This will stop the play. And it looked like Jamal Brown, the offensive tackle, might have moved before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Be a five-yard penalty and remain first down. Well, I think if you're Oklahoma, you just run your normal offense down inside the 10-yard line. And if you get one in on a running play, well, then you get one in on a running play. You could just take a knee <laughs> against your former offensive coordinator, Mike Leach. Well, from that first play call by Mike Mangino, it looked like they wanted to at least run one, but I would imagine now getting backed up that they may take that move. Well, they were together two seasons ago. Stoops' first year as head coach. Leach's only year at Oklahoma. He came from Kentucky. Bob Stoops said when he was at Florida as the defensive coordinator, he always admired the offense of Kentucky. With Hal Mummy, the head coach, was really Hal Mummy's offense. Mike Leach knew it very well as the offensive coordinator. He said, I couldn't hire Hal Mummy. I didn't think he'd leave the head coaching job to be my offensive coordinator. So they got Mike Leach, and it worked out very well for both sides. They instituted an excellent offense at Oklahoma. They still use the nucleus of it. And it led to an opportunity to be a head coach for Mike Leach. 
Ronaldo works back near the 10 yard line. Friday, ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast. Presented by Siemens, it kicks off at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. With a showdown between number six, Texas, and Texas A&M. Ed and I, along with Leslie and our gang, will be in College Station for that. Then at 3.30 Eastern, the trip to the Big 12 Championship is on the line when top-ranked Nebraska battles number 14, Colorado. And it's all next Friday, right here on ABC Sports. Works. Drop for a loss. Jonathan Hawkins made the tackle. He's had a terrific day. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Nate Hibble with 275 passing yards and three touchdowns. Back to Roy Williams in there, too. And Ricky Williams for Texas Tech. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Oklahoma continues rolling right along. Now 10 and 1 with the Bedlam battle against Oklahoma State remaining. The only thing standing between Bob Stoops and a return to the Big 12 championship game. Once again, our final score, Oklahoma 30 and Texas Tech 13. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports.